Oh god, this is gonna turn into a screaming match. I wonder, Somebody, do I, think, I gotta I got to give my example. I'm just gonna keep talking. I don't know why I can't just give me one question. Holy shit, you just explained a whole bunch of shit that didn't matter and you're about to do it again. Okay, so very, very succinct question, very easy. You're at your house, you brought a new date over, and your dog is sick. How fing dare you ask me? Spread your Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that your perspective is, um... So you're f retarded, okay? <laughs> it feels like I went through uh, so much. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to get emotional about this. Um... Obviously, you guys were known as friends a little while ago. Uh, very close, good conversations together. Stardust actually caught quite a bit of heat over her association with you. However, uh, a few months ago, there was a monumental conversation uh, that sullied the relationship that had been developed. And from what I understand, it led to a sort of terse exchange on stream, which then led to a number of months where you weren't really communicating with one another. Now, I floated the idea of sorting this out. And I think that, you know, I kind of left it with you. I didn't want to push the issue. But now we have gathered here together to finally fix the tattered, frayed relationship of Mr. Girl and Stardust. Now, because I'm both a woman lover and also think that Stardust is the one that initially had the issue with what Mr. Girl said, I think what I'd like to do is just allow you a maximum five minutes tops to explain what your issue is and then Mr. Girl, you'll have five minutes to respond, and then we're just gonna open up a conversation. This is to ensure that you're able to get out how you feel in a fairly reasonable time frame. So Stardust, please yeah. well, means explain the issue in more detail and then go on to what you've got to say. So we had a conversation last time we were on stream together because I really liked his video about the cat. I thought it was funny and I thought it was a really nice way to demonstrate how to tell somebody to, uh, you know, back off. Uh, can that I, you're not can interested. I, can I explain what you mean by my video? Wait, about... wait, 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 wait. No, people are gonna. Why are you interjecting already? Because she said my video about f***ing a cat, and I don't. I, I want to explain the context <laughs> of what she's talking about. Oh man. Okay. That would be I, I don't understand like, why you need to explain. That seems like plenty of context to me. No. Go, okay. Go on. I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Go on. <laughs> okay. As long as you're okay with the stardust. Mm -hmm. I made a video called "How to Say No to Sex," which is about. How if somebody asks you to have sex and you, you're not interested, you should plainly and clearly say no rather than giving excuses or trying to con try, basically trying to talk them out of wanting to have sex with you. And a guide I, I gave for that is imagine if someone asked to have sex with your cat, you should say no the way you would say no to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I liked it. I thought it was I thought it was a funny video. Um, and I thought it was um, interesting. And we started off our talk. And um, I basically, I, I said to Mr. Girl that uh, I really appreciated the video. I think a lot of women, um, especially younger women, are kind of socialized to not uh, really know how to say no the, the correct way, uh, socialized to kind of like do everything except give a hard concrete no, right? And uh, at the same time, you know, I personally felt like um, it, it's important for me because when I say uh, not right now, I right currently as I am, I have to, I have to clarify so many times to somebody that I'm interested in, I'm incredibly interested in you, I just need time, right? When I'm talking about me needing time, I need time. I have like issues, right? Um, and so that that's kind of what I was saying is like, you know, I, I don't want that type of that message to get misconstrued as me. I don't want people to all of a sudden read that as like, I'm no, uh, you know, uh, she's no longer interested in me because the truth is I am interested, but, um, but I just have, I, I need time. And, um, and then it turned into a conversation somehow about, about me saying that I need time being a test when it, for me, it's not a test. It's quite literally, if, if somebody can't give me that time, it's over. Like, I, like it, it's not going to work, <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, and then Mr. Girl went on to talk about how, 
well, you should understand if you're asking for time before getting physical with somebody that they're going to be, they have the right to be angry with you or angry. stuff like that. And then he started talking about this, uh, this, um, this relationship he had with this woman who wanted to have him get tested before they got physical. Um, and that was a whole thing. And then basically continued to tell me that what I am saying is a power move somehow. Me asking for time is a power move. Me asking for time is like a test. And for me, it's not a test. It's I, I I have not been in a relationship for four and a half years for a very specific reason, right? I, I need that. Like, I have very specific boundaries. If I can't get that, it's done. It's it, I'm not doing it, you know? And, and I'm willing to be... Uh, I'm willing to be by myself rather than somebody who thinks that I am asking this as from the perspective of a power move. Jesus. Okay. Um, and sorry, I just wanted to elaborate very briefly on the, you know, I, my understanding is you didn't have any contact for a little while with Mr. Girl. What was the reasoning behind that before we moved I on just, to Mr. Girl? It just felt, it felt awkward. It felt weird. And, and, you know, it's not like I have, I don't wish him any harm, you know, um, I don't wish him uh, any ill will or anything like that, but there's like a fun fundamental difference in the way that we understand this and the way that he views it. And he thinks that people should be entitled to be angry with me for exercising um exercising just basic requests it, when i say you don't have to you don't have to be with me <laughs> you know you don't have to you don't have to be with me um to if, if if that doesn't work for you but you don't you don't have to be angry with me either right like i i don't think it's reasonable to get angry with somebody for exercising uh, explaining what they physically need or what they physically can't give right at a specific time in a relationship so okay right now is to go you have maximum five minutes to respond to that and uh, elaborate further as you as you see fit oh i am angry at you Okay. Uh, Is that I'm, it? No. I mean, for the meme, I understand because I did make a meme that. Okay, that, shut up, Stardust. Yeah. Okay, so. listen. Let the men speak. Right, Mister Go, go. Um. No, I'm angry at you for not talking to me for three months. Um. What is all this shit? Nutrient vat, vitamin edge, spice. When I say that it's a test, I'm not talking about your experience. I'm talking about... But that's not what you were saying. Why are you interrupting? Sorry. I'm talking about how it functions in the courtship or relationship or whatever. So if you say, as you just said, um, I ask for time, and if a man can't give me that time, we're done. This is why I haven't been in a relationship for four and a half years, because no man has been able to... That's a, that's what I mean by test. I mean, I'm in a relationship now. But Okay. Nick and her are dating. I'm sorry, you're interrupting. What relevance is that to anything? It's, it's not. I'm just quoting. I'm just responding to what you just said. So, okay. my, so my perspective here is... I thought it was Stardust. <clears throat> yeah, I know. My perspective here is... Um, well, I guess I can just reiterate what I was saying last time, is that um, a lot of men don't like being told no and will, n will not take no for an answer, um, especially if it's a vague or unclear no. And um, I think um, as a result of both women's unwillingness to set clear boundaries um, and a... Uh, men, may, men's um, unwillingness to accept boundaries. We've developed a kind of coded way to deal with this, where women say no just to something, just to see how you react to it, and then gauge um, how safe they are with you uh, based on that. And what you describe as, oh, I need time or I need space, um, some component of that feels to me, I guess, um, whenever it happens to me, like a test. 
um, being human, I know that um, you can decide you want to have sex with somebody pretty quick. Um, and it's, it's worth waiting a little while to see if something uh, contradictory to that impulse is going to surface. Um, but what I said to you in the conversation was like, I, I've noticed and I feel like once you're past 30, the second date kind of makes sense to have sex on. I feel like if you, if you can't figure out whether you should have sex with somebody by the second date or not, um, you're, you're kind of lagging. Retarded? Retarded? No, that's, no, that wasn't what I was going to say. I was going to say okay. just, yeah, I was going to say just like a little slower. Really? Not mentally, but like, um, in terms of how safe you feel. And if you feel really unsafe, you're going to do things that I think could be called tests. So I'm, I'm not saying that these, these happen for no reason. And I'm not saying that there's not men who, um, you know, deserve that. I'm saying that as a man who, um, Jeez. who, who I don't think needs to be tested. Um, it feels enraging to add to the shame women have about wanting sex, the uh, awkwardness of whatever. It just it just all all the mis all the lies to add another reason for women to pretend they don't want sex when they do, or it, maybe this is an excuse for women to pretend they don't want sex when they, it just it it just it just. The, the setup of like, I'm supposed to convince you to have sex and then you're supposed to go, oh no, I'm not ready. Oh gee, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I, re I really can't stand it. Uh, I really don't like it. I feel like... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I feel like women would run tests specifically for people like this in the hopes of filtering people like this out. Does that sound mean to say? But like, I think that like, if a woman were to filter somebody like this out, like somebody that feels like they're getting angry because, like, it feels like th this would be like, okay, that's good. I'm glad that we're not like trying to casually date then. Uh, the story I told was, um, I'd known this woman for like a year, but we never had sex. We decided to have sex. She asked me to get tested, and I did. And then she told me she wouldn't have sex with me unless I physically showed her the test. And I was like, "Well, if you, if you, don't, if you think I'm gonna lie to you, then I don't want to have sex with you. Like, we need some basic level of trust. If you want me to be, this is like, damn, this is like the classic red flag um, for me. I like." There are people that I've hooked up with that are really big into getting tested. Um, and if somebody asks me for a copy, I always send it. Like, of course, that's super reasonable. If I ask somebody about their STD history and they get upset just because I ask, that's one of the biggest red flags ever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I, I just, I don't know why you would have a problem with it. There was a girl that I used to hook up with in um, LA, who lived in Calabasas, and I remember that her parents were not especially at risk, but she was really paranoid about COVID shit. And she was always like, do you have a COVID test? And I was like, yeah, of course. I'll usually send over the stuff without being asked. Like, yeah, of course, I would expect you to ask to see some kind of proof because I could just lie and say like, oh yeah, of course, I'm fine. Like, let's fuck. Like people would lie about that shit. There's nothing wrong with asking for a test. Like, that's like, ugh, fuck. It's a huge red flag. Um, it's a huge red flag if somebody throws up. Actually, <laughs> sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to come down on it, Max. Oh, God damn it. Now Max is watching me watch this. Oh, God. This is going to turn into a screaming match. Well, anyways, I would say, like, that. this is, like, an instant, like, disqualification for me. And I would tell a girl the same. If somebody's like, oh, yeah, like, I asked this guy about, like, if he had a test, and he got upset at me for asking for, for proof or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, that's that's it's good that he got upset there. Like, you saw who it was. Now, like, don't ever associate with him. Like, boom. Like, you saved yourself a lot of trouble. Like, it was good on you for asking. That's, I mean, that would typically be the advice I would give, but... Destiny is a master of misunderstanding Mr. Girl's points. Oh, we found the Mr. Girl fan fan in chat. Okay, one of you guys. <laughs> I've said this a million times and I'll say it again. I put more work into understanding Max than any other person on the entire internet ever will. So if I'm having trouble understanding him, 
Okay, what do you got? The Mr. Girl fan and shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what do you got for me? Red flag. You want to talk about red flags, motherfucker? What are you talking about? Yeah, if I, if somebody asks for like an STD test, I'm like, yeah, sure. And then they're like, oh, can I like see the paper or whatever? And the other person like throws up like a big hissy fit. I would say that's like a red flag. Like you should probably avoid that person. Um, a big, well, I didn't throw up a big hissy fit. I just said, no, I was just like, I, if you can't, if you don't trust me enough to believe that I'm not going to lie to you, look you in the eye and lie about whether I have an STD, like I'm going to intentionally infect you with an STD, then we probably shouldn't have sex. That's also, not at all what that question is about. I don't even know what you just said. Okay. I Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me just hold on. What you just said was nonsense. Nobody's talking about intentionally infecting people with STDs. People are talking about whether people are just being a little bit lazy um, and just don't get tested. It's not, nothing to do with like, I'm going to intentionally spread bugs to you. Like, that's insane. Okay, well, let me, let me tell you the context of this story. I know this girl for a year. We didn't have sex. And then mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I, I was like, you know what? I'm ready to have, I want to have sex with you. I just de texted her out of nowhere. And she was like, uh, okay, fine. We can have sex, but you got to get tested. So we both go, we both get tested. We went together, got tested at this clinic. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got our results separately. And I, I was like, okay, great. I don't have any STDs. And she was like, well, show me the paper. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I threw it out. But also, no, even if I hadn't thrown it out, no. Why would I show you the paper? So that, for like, her peace of mind, right? Yeah, so that's what I said. I was like, if you think, so your, your peace of mind, you, you know that I know if I have an STD, right, at this point. Yeah. Okay, you're the girl. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, am I lying to you? It's not, it's not about being lazy at this point. It's, I, I know I have an STD. You think I know I have an STD, but I'm going to look you in the eye and tell you that I don't. Just yeah, it could so be I that you have one that you don't think is a big deal. It could be you have one you don't think is infectious. It could be you have one you maybe it is, but you just like really want to fuck and you're like hoping to like run the risk. Right. And so I think if that's what you think of me, then I don't want to have sex. Like I, I want there to be a basic level of trust and understanding between us before we have sex. Sure. And it's fine if you have that opinion, but I would say like everybody should sexually avoid somebody like that. Like you should never be having sex with that kind of person. That's demanding that level of trust and respect and everything like right up front is probably unrealistic. And if somebody does it, it's more wait, likely that there mean? are nefarious wait, wait. reasons for it than like like altruistic or pure ones or whatever. Wait a second. How is it right up front? You think you're saying necessarily sex should come before trust? I'm saying that to have sex with somebody and then to there, there's a there's a level of trust of like there's a higher level of trust. Like, I trust that you're not going to be lazy. You're not going to hide anything, blah, 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 blah. That, that's a lot higher than just the trust needed to, like, have sex with somebody. Yes. Well, I'm not for me. That's why I didn't have, I mean, I don't, I haven't had sex with that many people. And when I do have sex with somebody, it's a pretty major event in my life. I think I've had sex with, like, sure. 12 people. That's great, but other people so, don't know that. You, you have a really hard time looking at things from anybody else's perspective sometimes. That's great that you personally feel that way, but you could also just be somebody that's lazy or somebody that just wants to, you know, fuck and you don't want to get tested. Or maybe you have an STD, but it's not, like, wait, a big deal. Wait, why right? should—you're saying I should drop—first of all, mm -hmm. I don't think I do have a hard time looking at things from other people's perspective. Well, you're giving me justifications that the other person wouldn't know. That's great that you personally well, feel that way, but they don't know. I don't have to give you a justification for me not wanting to have sex. That doesn't make well, any sense. Well, then why did you come on here to give a justification for it? <laughs> That's the whole point of you coming on here. You're a lot. You're entitled to think what you think. That's fine. No, but to anybody no, no. else, that would be I a reject, huge red flag. I, re oh, I reject the premise that in order to say no to sex, mm -hmm. I have to explain it to you. That's, that's what I came on here to argue about. That I don't think... You're, you, I said no to sex. That's the story. Somebody asked me to do something in order to have sex, and I said, no, I don't want to do that. And thus, I don't want to have sex. Yeah, you're totally within your right to do that. Well, I just don't, I don't see how that's a red flag. Like, it's a huge what? red flag because if you refuse to prove to somebody that you got like a particular test, that's a huge red flag. I would assume most of the time somebody's probably trying to hide something. Well, some people, some people want to get married before they have sex. Do you think that's a red flag? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Okay, well, I think you're cornering your, I think you're going debate bro, cornering yourself into calling things red flags that don't make any sense to call red flags. I think what you were implying is that it's a red flag implies that I'm like a liar or sociopath or something that that's there's some That's not what reason. a red flag, that's not at all what a red flag is. A red flag just says, hold up, there's something that might be bad here. Doesn't necessarily have to be. Yes, there are people that have bad... get married before having sex that do just fine. I personally think it's I dumb, know. but. No, no, the, it's, you're saying it, it says a bad thing about me. Yes. The bad thing implying that either I'm lying 
or that I have rationalized not telling somebody why. No, no, no. The I'm bad over, thing isn't that you're lying or anything. The bad thing is that you're expecting the other person to have what I would say is probably an unreasonable level of trust for a new sexual partner. I understand that, but because you have difficulty looking at things through other people's perspectives, you're assuming everybody has the same level of casuality about the first time I have sex with somebody that you do, but if you Didn't you literally say earlier in here that you believe that people should be having sex by the second date? How is that not an insane level of casuality? Even I wouldn't say that's the case. There are girls that I've been on more than two dates on before I've had sex with them. I, well, first let me, before you pivot to fucking that. Okay, sorry, finish your point then. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, Either sex or trust has to come first. And in your the way you're framing it, you're saying like sex should come up front. And then so, and then I'm, I'm pushing for a level of trust that's inappropriate if it's gonna come that up front. But for me, I don't, I'm not saying sex should sex, be okay. that up front. So when you say sex or trust has to come first. So firstly, I, I don't think this statement means anything. There are huge varying levels of, there are varying levels of sex, but that's not relevant, but there are huge varying levels of trust, right? Sure. But sure. this level of trust, we can just put a dot, put a pin. I in think the that tr- somebody trust is spectrum at believe somebody will not look you in the eye and tell you that they don't have an yeah, STD. I think somebody is more likely to lie about an STD than they are to like rape or murder you. Like there's Absolutely. a lot. Yeah, I think so there's too. a lot of people that I would tr- like, especially being a man when it comes to dealing with women. There is a ton of women that I would trust to have sex with that aren't going to do anything weird if we have sex. But the amount of people that I trust when it comes to like being 100% forthcoming about an STD, uh, that's going to be pr- probably quite a bit smaller, or at least a bit smaller. And even the okay. same thing when you switch to genders. There's a lot of women that are like, oh yeah, I, I would trust this guy to have sex with me, blah, blah, yes. But would I trust him to lie about an STD? Uh, I don't know. That's different. So uh, I think it's okay to have like, even if you have some level of trust, you still want to be, have like verification or proof of an STD test. And it shows a good I, faith willingness for you to like assuage somebody's like, or assuage somebody's um, like fears that you might have a disease or something. I don't, okay, but I think that this is not good. I think this is counterproductive. It's like when girls on dating apps tell you not to send them a dick pic. I know you don't want to get a dick pic, but all you're doing when you do that is you get somebody who would have sent you a dick pic to pretend that there's somebody who wouldn't send you a dick pic. And while I understand that you don't want an STD, you are also saying, I will have sex with somebody who would lie to me about having an STD, but who isn't right now. How would they How would I, they know that about you in an early stage of a relationship? Well, that's what I'm saying, is I, I think that if you think somebody is the kind of person who would lie to you about having an STD, then you shouldn't have sex with them. Maybe I, maybe I, maybe I put too much stock in my ability to judge people's character. How would you, no, yeah, you can't know that. You're just wrong. There's no way that you could know whether or not somebody no, would lie about an say, STD I didn't test. Say, no, I didn't say you would know. I said think. Well, why, think why would somebody... you gamble with like an STD? <laughs> why would you gamble like that? Well, you're gambling anytime you trust anybody with anytime you let somebody into your house. Like it, like. Hold on, stop. That was a bad okay. equivalency. You gamble. Right. You get, you reduce the amount of gambling you can take in your life anytime you do. Like you gamble every time you get behind the wheel, but you wear a seatbelt. You gamble every time you let somebody in your house, but you only let people in you know. You gamble every time you have sex, but you can ask for an STD test if if one is possible. Yes, that's true. You can do those things, but I wouldn't have sex with somebody unless I, like, uh, adding trust. Okay, if you're on a first date with somebody and you don't know them, uh, you'd be safer if you looked through their phone before going, at, like, walking through a parking lot with them at night, right? Like, if, you, if you're like, before we do this, I want to know as much information as I possibly can about you. So I want to do, like, a criminal background check. I want to look through your phone. I want to know every conversation you've ever had with anyone. You just told me a bunch of stuff. We were, on a di- we were at having dinner. You told me a bunch of stuff. I want you to prove everything you said at dinner was true so I know you're not a pathological liar. Like, you could... You could do those things, and I guess it would make you safer, but there's a sacrifice in destroying the trust by requiring proof and verification of everything that seems risky to you. Yeah, you don't have to prove and verify every single thing, sure. Right, so that that's what I'm saying, is that I but don't want to But this is a sex- really basic thing to prove, and it's a pretty important thing to prove, and it's really easy to provide proof for it. And if you've already gotten the test, you already have the proof for it. Why would well, you I've not? Never, I've never asked somebody to show me their SCD test. I don't care if you have. That's not, it's not an empathetic view towards others, just because there's a lot of things that I don't do that I, that I wouldn't expect other people to have the same Wait, view on. You're but. the one who's not empathize. I empathize with why people want to see the test. That's not what I'm saying. I understand that view. Okay, hold on. 
You can't say, I'm empathizing with you. you. I'm telling you that you have the right to do something. You can do that. That's fine if you want to. But I would say that, that to anybody else, it's going to be a huge red flag. It should be. Well, that's not very empathetic. Again, if <laughs> Wait, some how is people it not want empathetic? to say something is a huge red flag because you don't understand the values that are behind it. If I were if I were on a date with somebody and and I said, uh, yeah, I went to the University of Colorado, and they said, well, what what year? And I'm like, okay, I graduated in uh, 08. and they're like, uh, what street did you live on? Were there any coffee shops on that street? What was the name of it? I'm like, well, are you fucking testing? Like, hold like, on, I guess Stop. like. It this is a false equivalency because there is nothing at stake there. Let's make it there a little absolutely bit. absolutely is, but dating no, no, a pathological no. liar no, no, is no, no, a horrible thing. No, 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 stop, thing. stop. Pathological liars about no. about everything. Hold on. Here's, let's think of a more apt example. Let's wait, say that wait a second. Wait, wait. I want oh you to just admit okay. that something. Just I say everything now, that. and I'm going to tell you it doesn't matter, and I'm going to give you my example. So go ahead and go ahead and say whatever you're going to say. Go. Oh, why you can brag about your own inability to listen to an argument all you want, but I'm still going to make it. Go ahead. Checking on shit with people and ask him to prove their honesty does mm -hmm. does cost something on a date like if somebody did that you wouldn't like it right okay okay so i think that you're i think what's unempathetic is mm -hmm. that yes i understand why somebody would not like it if somebody refused to submit to their testing but i don't think you are showing any empathy as to why i would refuse gotcha okay i'm ignoring all of that and i'm going to ask my question i don't know why we just well, said that but okay so the question well, is... Because I was responding to what you fucking no, said. The question is, is when something is at stake with a new person, is it okay to verify? Not a something random question. Something is always at stake. No, just because on, you don't can't do the max things of like something thing. is always... I mean, this is a very specific thing. Somebody could put their dick nope. in your body and give you a disease. It's not like a, well, somebody might lie and pathological liars could cause... This is a very one-to-one... -one, there's somebody, a direct thing. I, gotta, I have to give my the, example. I'm just going to keep talking. I don't know why I can't just give me one question. Holy you just explained a whole bunch of shit that didn't matter, and you're about to do it again. Okay, so very, very succinct question, very easy. You're at your house, you brought a new date over, and your dog is sick, okay? And they're, they're being a little bit weird, and all of a sudden, your date that you brought over is like, oh, actually, hold on, I can help your dog. I'm a vet. If in that case, they said it there, and you're like, you're a vet? Well, wait a second, hold on. Can you show me, like, a license or something? It would be totally fair to ask for the license there because there's something at stake. Your dog is sick, they're about to do something to your dog, and you want to verify. But that's fundamentally different than being on a date and somebody's saying, like, oh, I went to school here, and you're like, I need to fact check every single thing you say. That's a different thing than saying, like, oh, let's have sex, can I have an STD test? Yeah, sure, let me see it. That's different than saying, like, I want to fact check every single thing you say in case you're a pathological liar. Like, there's a very clear okay. thing that's at risk, and there's a very easy way to find out if something is true or false. That's what I'm saying. Can you imagine a situation where you should be past that and where it would be inappropriate and destructive to the relationship to ask to see a veterinary license? Yes. Okay. That's the point where I would have sex with somebody. Then, okay. So, okay, we've put that in a box there. And what you've just said there, I can agree with you to some extent, maybe. So, I guess, okay. yeah. So, the thing I think you're not empathizing with me about is that I am not willing to have sex with people who I who I have a big question mark in my mind sure. about w whether they're like horrible people. Yep, okay, and I can put that in a box and that package on its own works. But now okay. we have to go to the other thing you said, where you said you feel like by date two, yeah. you know if you're, you, somebody should be ready to have sex. How do you square those two things away? I think that by the time you're in your 30s, you should be able to garner all the information you <clears throat> are going to need to make that determination about somebody in two long dates. Do you think that if I go on a woman in two long dates, by the second date, I should know whether or not I could come inside of her and that she's on birth control? I, th I don't think you can know. Okay, hold dates. on. Then would you ever, I think you if should, you had a you guy should. friend, if you had a guy friend who's like, I'm seeing this girl second date, she's really cool, I think I might score at the end of the second date, I'm actually super into her, or like, she's really cool, blah, 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 and he's like, and, and then your friend is like, do you think I should like finish inside of her? She says she's on the <laughs> pill, I think. Like, do you think I should do that? Or should I ask for like proof that she's on birth control? Or do you think that'd be like a bad thing to do? What would you give your advice to the guy friend there? Well, if I'm gonna be liable for the advice I gave, then I, 
I wouldn't do the same thing that I would do. If it were me, if I believe she was on birth control, I would come in her. Okay, but we're not talking about what we personally would do. We're talking well, yeah, about like are. the advice that we give for everybody else. No, right? we're talking about what we do. I'm not saying that other people should refuse to submit to STD testing. I'm explaining why I did it. Okay, then it's, is it fair to say then that most people would see that as a red flag if somebody on a second date wouldn't provide a test for STDs? Is it fair to say that most people... Could see that as a red flag. Uh, wouldn't provide a test. If asked. No, it's only a red flag if the person is insisting that you have sex. I don't think it's a red flag to be like, listen, I don't think we should have sex then. It's a red flag if you're like, how f***ing dare you ask me? Spread your f***ing legs. Trust me. Just trust me. I'm going to do this. That's a red flag for sure. Because then you're pushing past their boundaries. But setting up my own counter boundary of being like, I don't feel comfortable having sex. Like, if you have not made a determination about whether I'm a liar, then we shouldn't have sex yet. Okay. Do you understand that the answer that you would give there would be the same exact answer that somebody would give if they were in fact a liar? Yes. That's what trust is. You cannot do... Trust is when... Somebody could hurt you, but you are trusting them not to. And you so built that I trust say, up by the second date? Well, I would, but if they haven't, then what I would say is, okay, let's wait until you think I'm not going to look you in the eye and lie to you and hurt you. But I don't want to. I don't want to have sex before that point. Why? Why? I don't want to do that. I don't want to have sex with people who think that I might be like a crazy person. Okay. I think looking somebody in the eye and lying about an STD test is a more unusual behavior if you if you've gotten a test um that's that's an odd thing to do i don't think that's something that most people would do so you're talking about somebody who's like i think a lot of people lie about getting std tested they'll just say whatever because they want to fuck what what percentage of men do you think would look their date in the eye and say yes i got a test no i don't have herpes no i don't have this i don't have that Probably ten plus I, I, percent, I'd say. That's a lot. Yep. I feel like I feel like it's like two percent. Like here is a here is a lot of people just don't know. Here is a fact, okay? No, no, but the, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 let me. I'm gonna finish. Okay. Wait, Every wait, single woman changed, that I've had changed the hypothetical. You just changed oh the hypothetical. I'm talking about somebody who just got a test and has it, just read it and threw it out. What percentage of those people do you think would look their date in the eye? If you knew that they read it and threw it out, that number is probably lower. But I don't know. I, like you're gonna see the person, see them throw the test out and not tell you. Like this is an absurd hypothetical. This isn't we happening went most to the of the clinic. time. We went to the clinic together, so she knew I got tested. Okay, in that case, I would say that she should one million percent run the. F away from you as quickly as possible if you walked into that clinic That's together an to and you question. both got tested and you crumpled it up and threw it away and didn't show it to her then i would say that guy has fucking aids run that's, that's what i would say that's fine but that's not an answer to my question my question is what percentage of men in that situation would see that they do have an std but then look their look the person in the eye and lie about it um at that point i i don't know I think it's pretty low. You said 10 plus percent before. Probably. If you're willing to go to the clinic together and get the test, it is probably pretty low. But the percentage I've, of men that wouldn't share the test is also incredibly low. And I would imagine that there's going to be a yeah, huge overlap. No there's a huge overlap between men that take the test and won't show it to their partner and men that took the test and won't show it because they're positive for an STD. I would say there's a huge overlap between those group, two groups. True. So why would That's so true. why why and and the issue even if they haven't if they've just said they've gotten tested a lot of people just don't know that much about STDs so for instance I've slept with a lot of women who said like oh yeah I've gotten STD tested I'm like oh crazy just curious have you do you think you have herpes have you ever gotten tested I was like oh no 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 my tests have all been negative for herpes too and I'm like oh, okay cool um, and I might ask casually later because I always shit test like this because it's funny I was like oh like have you ever had like a blood test for STDs and almost every single time they say no I've never taken a blood test for STDs then you haven't gotten tested didn't. for herpes yeah you you yeah. don't you just don't know. And they're not lying about it, but they just truly, they don't know. You can't test for herpes on a P-test. It just doesn't work that way. Um, right. But like, so that's an example of like, and there are plenty of people that just don't know things about STDs. Somebody might've fucked somebody and then gotten tested the next day. And like, oh, I came back clean for everything. So I know I'm good. That's not true. Even chlamydia and gonorrhea can take a few days or I think up to a week or two sometimes to show up on an STD test. You could be infectious already and, and not know it. Um, so I don't think, yeah, just if somebody wants to see a paper, I just think that's totally fine. The idea that like you can build all this trust by date two for them to not like just be like, oh, you know, yeah, I'm tested. It's good or whatever. Th that's just, it's a huge red flag for me.
well, I know that you think it's totally fine for somebody to want to see a test, and I think that's totally fine too. But do you also think it's totally fine to not want to jump through hoops to fuck somebody? Uh, I, you personally, seem, me? Seem, no. I think that one of the biggest reasons why I am as successful with people's names is because I'm su super willing to show good faith. Like, hey, look, like, yeah, I am like trustworthy. Successful Here, actually, at what? At fucking? At having people trust me. Because trust is built. Trust isn't a thing that you mind no, fuck somebody looking, into by being an empath. Your, seeing your test is the opposite of trust. No, you're dead wrong. Showing somebody a test shows that you're willing to go the distance to, like, that's if I meet trust. a girl. No, wait, that's not, that requires no trust. That you're, situation you're, you're, requires zero trust. Okay. Trust is when yeah. trust is when you, someone could hurt you. This is just not you. no no. That's just this is just not how human brains work. If that's I go fine, here's here's if wait, I go wait, if wait, I if wait, I show up and I, I finish, see somebody. Can I finish what I'm saying. No, hold on, because you interrupt me all the time. If I oh, you can finish after this. <laughs> if I show up at somebody's house and I'm like, oh yeah, let's fuck blah blah. I'm like, oh shit, are you testing what I was like? Yeah, actually, I have the fucking paper right here and I show them. If somebody sees that, the trust that they have in me will go up a lot just by the fact that I have that with me and I'm willing to like bring it up without them asking would be a huge level of like building trust. I know that for a fact. Go ahead. That builds trust, but that is not trusting. Yes, I agree that building trust can be can happen when you say something that could be a lie and then immediately prove that it's not a lie. That could make someone more likely to trust you later. But the act of actually trusting somebody is when they could hurt you, you have no way of proving or verifying that they won't, and no way of verifying your own safety, and then you choose to trust them. Sure, I, mean, I can agree with that, that's, that's, but I would also say that's a red flag. <laughs> I don't. Even, I don't even know what you mean. Trust is. I'm just defining the word trust for you. Okay. Because we keep you keep using it, but I think you're not using it in this way. I want sure. When you say trust, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, let's get into it. So when you say trust, what you really mean is blind faith in somebody. That's what you mean. No, it doesn't have to be blind. It can be come up with a, all the data that you've amassed about the person since meeting them or since going on dates with them. But the the, the trusting part is when they could hurt you. And you're giving them, them the, you're showing them your belly. You're giving them the opportunity to hurt you and trusting that they're not going to because of how you feel about them or what you've seen so far. Uh, okay. So for me to have sex with somebody, we have to be past the point where they trust me enough to think that I'm not going to look them in the eye and lie. And if they don't trust that in me, then I don't want to have sex. So again, it's like, I'm, this is, you're saying you're more successful and I, I agree that jumping through people's hoops because they don't trust you and making it so they don't have to trust you as much will get you laid more for sure. But that's not my goal. My goal in the story is not to get laid. Okay. At all costs. Gotcha. So I'm saying I, I require and obtain a higher degree of trust. I don't. I just don't see. Again, there's people who won't have sex with you till they get married. So I just don't see how it's a red flag for to be like, yeah, like. Wait, yeah, how can? Okay, hold on. No, no. Now you're wrong. Okay, everything you said up to that point is a okay. You can have your <laughs> views of everything. You can have your way, but but when you say I just can't see how that's a red flag, flag, now you're you're in the wrong because what you're saying, what you're positing, would be a red flag to to most people. That by it's the second day again, oh, again, it's only a red flag if it's accompanied with entitlement. So it's definitely a red flag to say. We're, f we're gonna fuck, you owe me. You have to fuck me. You don't get to see the test. You're gonna trust me. It's not a red flag to be like, yeah, you know what? I only have sex with people if we really click. And that, if, that, if is, think that is a red flag. What you just said is a red flag. I would consider I, that to be manipulative. To say I only have sex with people if we really click? Yes. If somebody's Why like, I really, if somebody's like, I, I'll have sex with you, but I'm not gonna show you a test because I only have sex with girls that trust me. And if you don't feel like you trust me um, and you, enough to see a test result, then I'm not gonna have sex with you. That would, I would consider that to be manipulative. To manipulate her into having sex? Yes, of course, easy. But that, but I, that wasn't my goal. I didn't want to have sex. I it doesn't matter if saying, that's your goal. I was, I was saying Lex Friedman. If we're both I, on a date. I no longer, no, 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 no. no longer want to go on your podcast. If, I, if I'm on a date situation. with a girl and it was the second one, it's going well. I know she likes me and I know I have a bit of leverage over her. And she should have a bit of leverage over me. And we go to hook up at the end of the night. And she's like, hey, can we hook up? It's like, yeah, sure. It's like, have you hadn't tested before? I'm like, yeah, of course. She's like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm really proud of you. Do you have like results or whatever? And I'm like, hmm. actually, 
I do have results, but I'm not going to show them to you. And I'm not going to have sex with you if you don't trust me. That's, I one, don't, that's I, textbook manipulation. I think this is an anti-male, weird perspective that you have. Why isn't it not manipulation for her to say, I'm not going to have sex unless you show me the thing? Both people, it's, it's okay to have conditions for because, sex. Because, hold on, because what she's asking for is revealing information. What you're asking for is concealing information. It's not the same ask. You can make it about men or women if you want, but we can reverse the gender roles, and I would say the same thing. If a, okay, if what, a, okay, if a, if a guy is, says, if, I want to see an STD test, I've had conversations with women like this before when it comes to coming inside somebody. I've had some women get really upset at me and that's fine okay, well i'm like hey listen i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ejaculate you unless you actually show me your fucking pill package i'm gonna watch you take you, the fucking pill or i need to feel an injection your arm you can ask us i felt for things you said you were you had the implant let me fucking feel it yeah of course and there are women that i've ran into that have gotten upset at that and i understand that that's a red flag to me if you're mad that i'm double checking something like that, this isn't a gendered thing at all this can be men or women it works on both sides wait you don't think you so you think that if a woman says you know, I don't really want you to watch me take my pill. That seems weird to me. And if we're, this is where this is going. I don't want to have sex anymore. She's being manipulative because she's forcing him to have sex with her without the revelation of you this don't have information. To force somebody, but I think it can. No, be, no, it can no, be manipulative. You yeah. just no, no, no. Let's turn. Let's reverse. If it's not gendered, then we should be able to nicely reverse the genders, and it should work out just fine. What you just fucking said is that I am being manipulative by saying I don't want to go through your test, so let's just not have sex. Mm -hmm. If a woman said the same thing, a man says I want to watch the pill go into your mouth. And she says, you know what, let's not have sex. I don't want to anymore. She's manipulating him into having se unprotected sex with her, potentially. It, no, she's it just can setting be a fucking boundary. Yeah. But it's not. It, you wouldn't have that reaction. It's, it's just, just setting a boundary. It's being no, like, no, look, if, if, I, if, if I go if, to have if, sex with a woman, and I'm like, hold on, wait, before we do this, like, can I just see proof that you're actually like, on birth control? And she's like, I actually don't fuck guys that ask for proof of that. And I'm like there, and I'm horny, and like, ah, oh, fuck me, like, okay, yeah, that's a that's kind of manipulation. You, that is, that's on you. All no, manipulation not, is on you. That's the point of manipulation. You're not actually forcing somebody to do something. You're mind fucking them into it, of course. No, you're, it's not mind fucking if she actually just doesn't want to have sex. If she's like, look, if you're the kind of person that has the amount of casual sex and the lack of trust and the lack of intimacy in the casual sex you have, where you feel like it's socially appropriate to demand to watch people take medication, we're just not on the same page. I just don't want to do this. Okay, I agree with I, that. I, I, yeah, it's not on the okay. same page. Sure, that's fine. You're I, a right to I, have that. You can do that. Okay, so I don't think me saying no to sex should be framed as manipulation. I said no to a bitch. What's the big deal? I guess it would depend on, on, on where the context of it comes up at, but... I mean, it, it, to me, that's what it feels like. I would say that it is, but. Well, she didn't say that. She said. I don't care what she says. Women are fucking stupid. <laughs> but so are men. So I wouldn't care what the, I don't need their testimony in that circumstance to, to know whether or not, especially if I am accusing you of a form of manipulation, why would the manipulated person know if they're being manipulated? Usually they don't. I just, I just, I feel like you are assuming that I want to have sex so badly that I actually am willing to jump through the hoop but I just am not doing it for some other reason. Instead, it feels like you don't genuinely believe that being asked by somebody to show them my test results makes me actually not want to have sex with them. No, no the issue how, how is can that, I, because how right can I navigate now, that without I, manipulating? I don't, I don't know. I don't know about you personally, but in the overall dating scene, right now an overwhelming amount of trust is asked for on the woman's side. There's a lot of trust involved. There's very, very, very little on the male side. There's a huge amount of trust asked for yeah, on the woman's it's, side. It's not, so yeah. when we're in a situation where if a woman could ask about an STD test for like what is a relatively minor thing, it's not an inconvenience you to just show a paper or whatever, and that's too big of an ask, you're asking Wait, for them to take on even more me, risk? Then I'm like, it Jesus, makes, it's just it like an unreasonable me, ask. There's no reason to do it. But what if it just makes me not want to have sex? That's fine. You don't have to. Just like I would say wait, if somebody made wait, a big deal about showing a test, then, then, then I'd say that's a red flag. You don't, have to, you don't have to do this. Yeah, sorry. I don't, you're saying that me not wanting to have sex is a red flag and then calling it manipulation. No, hold on. What did I she say, She did Max? something. No, 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 no. I said that you not wanting to have sex is a red flag. That's a manipulate. No. What did I actually say? Me refusing say? to show her the test. Yes. And in, in, instead of showing her the test saying, you know what? I don't think we should have sex. If you don't trust me, I don't want to have sex. Yeah, it feels like a, a manipulative game. Yes. What? How can I react if I genuinely no longer want to? If, if I am like, oh, you're a paranoid person. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're a trusting person. I think that any relationship with you would just be an endless nightmare of people lying to each other and checking each other and looking through each other's shit and spying on each other. And I don't want to get into this. 
I want an adult relationship with an adult woman who trusts me and who I can trust okay. and who is willing to take the risk of being like, oh, well, if you say something, you look me in the eye, then I believe it. That's the relationship I want. That's the sex I want. How can I, how can I navigate that without doing what you think is a fucking red flag or mm-hmm. manipulation? I would say when they put up the boundary, then you just de- detach completely. That's what I would say. It's probably the appropriate thing to do. So just not respond? All right, yeah, or just be like, okay, well, I don't think this is going to work out and then leave. <laughs> you so just you think it's inappropriate to explain why? Yes, I think you should just leave. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> no, I think that's it for now. Oh boy, is this going to be a fun conversation? Oh, with Stardust? Yeah. No, it's horribly upsetting. Oh Jesus! Well. I think it's the most upset I've ever gotten on stream. Jesus. <laughs> and that's saying something. Okay, well, wish us luck. Uh, I'll be here if you want to call and <laughs> defend past Max. Okay. okay. Good luck. I love you, buddy. Be careful. I love you, too. Just to reiterate my point, uh, especially with new sexual partners, um, it's you're totally within your rights and you should be asking for proof of like are you on birth control do you have an std test or whatever there's like there's no reason not to ask for that and not to see proof and if somebody is like hesitant at providing proof or if they like do this like oh well you don't trust me blah 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 then it's like okay yeah just leave like there's there's never ever 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 any reason to like um uh not humiliate um Humor. There's no reason to humor like a like a person like that. I think you. I think you just walk away. That's what I would say. That would be the advice that I would give to everybody asking. But what would you consider proof of birth control? Um, for me personally, I, well, I'm like an e-celeb, so it's a little bit different for me. But like, I have to see. Like, I either have to feel an implant, or you have to make more money than me. That's that's usually the way that it goes. Um, or I have to know you really, really, really well and feel very, 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 very confident because I'm not about to get fucking baby trapped by some random person like, oh no, like I'm totally on birth control. Like, no, why the fuck would I do that? Why would I, why would I jeopardize my entire fucking life to come in somebody? Kind of weasley to say this after Max left. That's the exact same thing that I said while he was in here. Goodbye. I don't believe Destiny goes as far. I think he talks a good game, but Destiny would risk it all for a girl he's chatted a lot with in DMs. Abba, you are dead fucking wrong. You have no idea. I can actually lose a boner thinking about coming in a girl. Like, it, it is horrifying to me, especially, no offense, the type of women that I've gone through in my past, it would be life-ending to get somebody like that pregnant. Like, uh, fuck, I don't know if there's somebody you could ask, but like, there are girls that I've gotten into fights with because they have actually gotten offended or upset where it's like, oh, like, where do you want to finish? And it's like, oh, I don't know. Like, oh, I can do this or that or that. And she's like, oh, what about a sign? He's like, oh, I don't know. And like, what do you mean you don't know? And it's like, oh, you know, I just don't normally do that type of thing. Like there have been some women that have gotten like upset at me 100%, but like I can finish anywhere. It's just an orgasm. Like, um, is there an example of somebody that I've fought with? There are some people that I do trust though. Like if I meet somebody like, um, I'm not trying to say that like I wouldn't trust anybody ever about anything. Like there were a few people that I knew in LA that were really cool. Like there was a girl I knew she was going to law school. Like I had, I think I'd even met her parents a couple times. Like she seemed like she's super at her life together, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, sure. Like I'll trust like probably a person like this is okay. Another girl I knew in LA that was loaded. She lived in like Justin Bieber's neighborhood going to top five law school now. Like, yeah, I trust that girl. Um, if I've known somebody for a long time, like years and years probably but for somebody that i've just like been talking to for like a week or two and then like we meet and we hook up like i'm probably not like finishing a other person it's just it's the risk is way too huge and i would kill myself i would kill myself if they the thing that i always think about when i put myself in a situation is like okay if it goes wrong and i was talking to myself in the future would i say man that really sucks or would i say man you're a f- retard you know like if Melina would have baby trapped me, we've been dating for four f-ing years. If I were to tell myself that five years and I'm like, damn, Melina baby trapped, it's like, damn, that sucks. Like she got you good. Like she dated you for three or four years, came to the US, gave up her whole shit. Like, damn, she f-ing you, man, you, you got got, right? But if I meet like a girl at TwitchCon and we go back to my room to mess around and she's like, no, trust me, baby. Like, oh, like, look, I got pills. I got pills in my purse. Like, of course I'm on birth control. And then we f-ing, she gets knocked up. And I talk about it like three years from now when I'm on the hook for child support. And I'm like, bro, you nutted at a girl you met first night at TwitchCon? What the f 
dog. She showed you pills. Good job, dude. Good one. Like, I feel like a dumb f I feel like an idiot. You ask her where you should bust during? Yeah, of course. What are you fing silent when you're fing a girl? Yeah, when you get close, you let her know. Yeah, hey, I'm going to come soon. Like, where should I finish? Or what do you want me to finish? Or what do you want to do? Blah, blah, blah. Sometimes they'll ask. Yeah, sure. You just keep going and you're like, you nut inside her and you're like, hey, I hope it's okay. But like, ha ha. the fuck out of here. You're about to trigger the fuck out of me, aren't you? No, no, not at all. Not okay, at all. what's up? Uh, uh, I was going to say, if, if you really do what you say, that's impressive. Because I probably argue that like before 25. Mm-hmm. At like little to no dick discipline so i don't know oh dude oh no 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 before 25 i'm sure i fucked up absolutely no 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 okay. for sure absolutely before 25 there might be some little stephen bunnell the thirds out there that i was just a retard about i don't think i was as much before 25 for sure but today like like 30 and onwards uh i think i've been pretty or no probably like 27 28 and onwards i've, I've thought about it before but yeah i'm sure like 22 23 when i was like first starting to like um hook up and get around with people i wasn't thinking about it as much for sure Cause I hear some people talk about like sexual health and and, mm -hmm. and doing everything properly, and I'm like, that's great. I'm like, but y'all never was around and did anything wild before. Like, cause the way that people talk about it, I don't know if it's real. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I hear people like, oh, you know, you always want to ask for STD checks and all this other stuff. I'm like, because I don't believe you do that every time. I think you say that outwardly because it's the right thing to say. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, most people are not doing that. I know because when I was out there. I would get tested and then I would ask a girl she'd gotten tested and she's like, yeah, yeah, I did. And then the, as we dated, mm -hmm. I found out she hadn't been tested in like six, seven months. Yeah, for sure. So, that happened. There's, I usually tell people like, I, I, don't, I don't most ask. Most people lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. And I don't ask, I don't ask every single time, mainly because I don't even like, mainly because I, because I don't know if I would ever believe him every time. Like I might ask and, and you might say yes, but I'm probably not going to ask you for your paperwork and then even if you do i'm not going to know like have you hooked up with anybody since then usually my general advice to people is like just get tested like every few months or like every partner or two or three or whatever the fuck like just make sure you're getting like semi-regularly tested right like more than you go to the dentist if you're having a lot of casual sex like if you're telling me that like you get std tested like once every like five years probably not good but if you're telling me you get tested like once or twice or three or, or several times a year and you have like well, then you're probably fine fuck it. like yeah i'm not gonna pretend that i'm like yeah walking out like asking for every single girl's paperwork for sure right mm -hmm. which is not the worst way to go about stuff but the truth is this is how people operate mm -hmm. they get a test then they have like a serious partner yeah and then they date one person and then they f you right or maybe they f another two people in the middle mm -hmm. but they didn't get tested that whole time they assume but that the partner said, yeah. didn't cheat okay then they assume that the person they hooked up with that they had known even while they were in the relationship with the other person didn't do anything shady because they told them they did it so they're operating off of a lot of like uh i think everything's okay and that's how people are going around saying like i'm good i'm clean but i i, I i've seen from own people's sex habits as well as my own but just also observing other people it's not true that people are practicing safe sex when they say it and uh, I think that's how most people end up catching STDs oftentimes is from people who think they're clean and are confident they're clean, but fucked around with the wrong person. Yeah, it just depends on how much you get tested. Like, as long as you're getting tested every few months, you're probably okay. Just make sure you're not going, like, months and months between. Or not even months and months, but, like, there, there's no years reason. between. Yeah. Most people are not going to get tested that often because even if they have sex every once, like, like you, you and I are having sex often, yeah, right? all the time. Most people Hell are, yeah, my you know, sex just plowing right? Pussy, right? <laughs> so... But most people are not fucking that often, so True. they don't feel the, like the need, and they don't feel at risk for it. Like oh, that. sure. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm sorry. I should have maybe I should have just said this because I'm not even. The problem isn't the STDs because gonorrhea and chlamydia aren't who the f cares, especially because a lot of people are asymptomatic. The reason why I say you should get tested every so often, it's not even necessarily because of transmission. The problem is that if you have chlamydia or gonorrhea and you carry these for a long time, they can start to do permanent damage to your reproductive Absolutely. system. Absolutely. That's the reason why you get tested like more than like, hopefully more than once a year, but at least like a couple times a year or, or just, just to make sure that you're not carrying these for a long time. For men, I think chlamydia, I think can destroy your seminal shit or whatever, and you can become like almost infertile, um, your tubes or whatever. And then for women, I think chlamydia Media can start to destroy your um, something in your ovaries or something with your like it can make you infertile as well. That's the reason why you get tested. It's not just so that you you never have it. Like if you get chlamydia, you're gonna know who it happens. Who the fuck cares? Just make sure that you're not carrying it for a long period of time, and destroying your body. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think most people's knowledge of, like sexual health is like limited to none. Mm -hmm. When guys ask me about it, they're like, "Yeah, you just get the pill." But like you said, it can affect your reproductive abilities, yeah. or it can have other long term effects that like really fuck up your urinary tract and things like that. So, mm -hmm. it's one thing you want to definitely get rid of. Unfortunately, those are the ones that you can get rid of easily. There's some that you can't, and there's other ones that also 
like I don't know. I've never had an encounter or anything anywhere close to stuff like uh, syphilis or weird stuff like that. Uh -huh. But apparently, those things have extreme side effects as well. They're common in some park pockets of the world. So uh -huh. it, it just takes one wrong vacation. It just takes fucking with the wrong person. So I mean, the truth is, uh -huh. and I think this is what I accepted a while ago, is that when you're out there fucking, you're rolling dice. Now there's certain things that might elevate those risks certain types of people that you might be fucking with that might elevate those risks mm -hmm. but the truth is there's just risks with hooking up with people period sure but i would say as a guy you, you should be minimizing the fuck out of your at least as a celebrity i think as a normal guy i'd feel a little bit differently but now as like a little e-celeb or whatever i think you should be really careful about getting women pregnant that might just be me being paranoid but like Oh my god, dude! If some woman like baby trapped me, I would kill myself. Especially because you know what I think dude. happens. I don't think yeah. they baby trap people. I, you know, you know what my suspicion is, dude. Abortion think... trap? That would be so sick. <laughs> I think... If I was a woman, I would like DM like six guys and be like, "You remember when we f last year? Give me ten grand, or I'm gonna carry this baby to term just to see who pays up." I would. Sorry, God. So, so yeah. this is what it is. Mm -hmm. Once they get pregnant, they start feeling all types of stuff, and they change their mind. Sure. It's not that they trapped somebody. And I think as a man, it's kind of tough to understand because you're on the receiving end where you're essentially being brought into having the responsibility of taking care of a child that you didn't want. And that even if she agreed beforehand, let's say she said to you, I don't want a baby. I'll mm -hmm. never want a baby. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. She gets pregnant. All the hormones get injected. She thinks about having a child, naming it, raising it, mm -hmm. all the fucking childhood things she never got to live. And she starts having second thoughts. It's mm -hmm. fucked up. Absolutely. Because as a man, you get dragged into it. But to me, on my side, there's an understanding I have of why they wouldn't go through with the abortion. Um, yeah, I would instantaneously. I would do everything I could to manipulate and coerce that woman to have an abortion. Uh, or she'd be taking a, a couple of short trips down some long bro, stairways. Bro, and then I would never talk crazy. to her ever again. I would never, ever, ever f*** you for even pretending to do that to a man. That is one of the worst, most insane fucking things. I'm empathetic. I understand you may have some crazy feelings going through your mind. But listen, dude. Uh, you know, hormones are temporary. Child support is for 18 years, okay? That's some insane fucking shit to put a guy through. Um, that shit have be an adult don't like being emotional is not an excuse for everything if women want to be taken seriously even when they're their periods which i think they should be then you need to be able to be an adult be taken seriously when you're fucking pregnant like make some adult choices okay p okay all right <laughs> hypothetical. hypothetical let's say she changes her mind she wants to keep it but she says you don't have to be involved any type of way as she swears to her dying days she'll never make you involved Man, that's a shitty thing to do to somebody because now they're going to have a kid that like they is going to maybe seek them out one day and they don't know how they're going to feel about that. Um, damn, go find a guy that wants to be the dad. Like that's just such a shitty thing to do to somebody. That's so horrible. Okay. And it's a horrible thing to do to the kid. Like just to make it easier for you to stay away. What if she names the child Vouch? <laughs> It's just such a horrible thing to do to everybody involved. Why? Like that's a what, horrible thing to do. Name the child Vouch or birthing him. Like like having the kid when the guy doesn't want to, and when you are saying the kid is never going to see the guy and everything. Like why would do that? That's just so fucked up. Why would you do that to the kid? Why would you do it to the guy? Why would you do that to yourself? Go find a husband that wants to have a kid with you, or go or or abort that kid and just go to a semen factory and get the uh, artificial insemination or whatever. Like Jesus. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying uh it's a tough one it's a tough one I it's think, not um, tough sorry i don't think it's tough i think it's really simple like if the person says they don't want to have a kid don't have the kid with them like yeah 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 i think um maybe it's because i'm getting older and i haven't had a child yet so i think my my thoughts of like wanting to keep children become more and more prevalent i don't know if you notice this but mm -hmm. actually well, you probably had the opposite experience because you've already had a child mm -hmm. but, um, yeah i'm good dude i got one i don't need even fucking more <laughs> Melina, you know, sometimes so, so, so sometimes you're inside the sugar walls and the girl's like, uh, this is what happened. <laughs> she was Dominican too, which is funny because I'd heard a joke the week prior, but <laughs> we were going at it. And then I was like, you know, I asked her, like, where do you want me to come? And she said, inside me. And I'm like, I thought you weren't on birth control. She's like, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> there was like a one second pause. I'm like, damn. That shit was kind of sexy, not gonna lie. And then the second second, I was like, oh, hell no. And I pulled out and just busted on her back. <laughs> yeah, obviously. But, Getting people pregnant but, is hot as f 
I don't disagree, but that's a question of sexual fetish versus response. Listen, dude, I had a girl that we did a lot of stuff like that, okay? And I'm not proud. I have really good endurance, and I passed most of the tests. We did a lot of crazy shit like that. And I'm going to say, when we broke up, the next guy she was with got pregnant in, like, four months. And I'm like, holy shit. So, I mean, like, yeah, people do it for sure. But it's not suggested, and it sure as hell isn't. Um, but, yeah, obviously, there's probably some, like, primal thing built into humans where, like, getting people pregnant and shit is obviously Hot, right or i imagine most people feel that way or maybe that's a maybe it's a rare kink that you and i share do brother. you have that feeling do you have that feeling? yeah of course okay I, I don't know if you had that feeling just because like the way my 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 very close friend he had a kid and like you know not always under the great circumstances and, and like he's traumatized by the whole experience so i didn't know if like that happens to most folks um but i guess that's not the case i i only i only noticed this change as i got older I, when i was younger i never even was like tempted by busting inside or anything like that. And as I got older, it's just like, there's like a shift that happens. You know how like women, as they get older, like, I think their biology changes and, and all of a sudden they get this desire to have kids. And like, I know women who even see kids and like their ovaries are affected by it for some reason. Mm -hmm. I wonder if dudes have that same thing when it comes to like busting inside. Yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe it's a thing as you get older. I remember feeling that way growing up or whatever, that like some women seem gross and like teenagers were attractive forever or some shit. Or I was always worried that'd be a thing. But then by the time you hit like 25, 30, you see like some single moms like, holy shit, she looks like she needs another kid. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, no, yeah, I know what you mean. There's like a, there's definitely a feeling. Yeah, it, it completely changes. Like I've noticed that like I, before I used to be like mouth all the time. That was my favorite thing. And then all of a sudden I just, you know, start to get closer to 30. I'm like, I don't need to leave the walls. I could just... I could just stay right here sure. and uh and it's just become a and i don't know if it's because mentally i'm in a different place or if it's like actually biological but like the desire for children also seems to shift i don't think it's as intense as like i hear some of the women my age talk but i've noticed that there's like a, a stronger desire for it mm -hmm. I, do you go through the same thing or do you feel like because you've already had a child you're you're not there at all um am i Going through the same thing where I want because no, I don't feel like I want another one now because I, I okay. already have Nathan and he's already long distance. So, yeah. But I mean, like, if Melina wants one at some point, I probably will. But I think the problem is I'm like, I put so much time into work and everything right now. Like, I barely have time for even Melina and Nathan. Like, have another kid, um, have time for Melina and Nathan, not to Melina and Nathan. Sorry, that came out weird. Okay. But, um, I, I, I came in on the trail end of that last discussion, but uh -huh. I heard you guys talking and it sounded like it was a circumstance. Clarify for me if I'm wrong. Circumstance where he was about to sleep with somebody, they wanted to see the test, and he's like, "No, if you don't trust me, then we don't need to have sex." Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, and you were essentially making the point that that yeah, that's kind of manipulative. Um, it depending on the circumstance, it feels like it could be, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I could definitely see it. Uh, you know, you had, is it the first time they're sleeping together? Well, in this circumstance, he gave in this story, it seems like it would be okay because he's saying it was a person he knew for a year, so I could be more empathetic then. But the issue Wait, I had was, in a relationship. I guess not. They were just friends for a year and then they wanted to have sex or something. I don't think they were dating for a year, but I could be wrong. But the issue that I had was that later on he gave the take that you should know by the second date if you want to fuck somebody or not. So like if it's a person you know for a year, I can be a little bit more understanding. But if it's somebody that sure. you've like been on a second date with, I don't know if that's enough time to know whether you trust somebody to have like um, birth control or, you know, uh, STD yeah. test or not. Like, yeah. You know what I think it is manipulative? I think if you get to the point where, actually, well, you can make the case as manipulative throughout the whole process, but I think if you get to the point where you guys are making out and you guys are doing stuff and you're about to fuck, uh -huh. okay? Like you guys are starting to address each other and it's like, oh, wait, are you tested? Can I see the test or whatever? Uh -huh. If you do it at that point, I think that's when it's pretty. Yeah, for sure. That, yeah. That, that, if you're that, having that, like that, a that text point. conversation like the night before and like, hey, are you tested? And you're like, no. Or, or you're like, yeah. And you're like, can I see? And you're like, no, I don't have sex with people to do something. That's probably fine. If you're like long distance, it's like, but I, when I say long distance, like you're not like in the heat of the moment ever. Yeah. But the closer you yeah. get to that moment, if you say like during a date, that it starts to feel a lot more weird. And maybe that's just me being autistic, but like, I, I, I think you're in tune to this. Like when you're on a date with somebody and they like you, you can move that person really far outside of their comfort zone and they'll probably go along if they like you enough um mm. and i try to avoid situations i guess like that with people especially if i know the person really likes me there's a lot of things i can ask that they wouldn't be comfortable with normally but they'll do it because like they're around me and it's in the moment and blah 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 yeah and i think I mean, yeah yeah uh, so so the whole idea of withholding things within the dynamic of a relationship uh -huh. is generally a pretty strong tactic if you want to manipulate them to do what you want mm -hmm. meaning if you want something from somebody they say no you withhold something else to let them know they're being punished almost until they give in to what you want and, and, and kind of, i'm not saying that's inherently what he was doing or anything but that that can have that effect you know what i'm saying so for example 
let's say you want to sleep with a girl and she says no then you refuse any form of affection with her she may see that as like she's being punished so she has to give in to what you want right um and uh, i think that extends to like different forms of actions that you can take in any relationship where if you don't get what you want Mm -hmm. yeah there's ways you can take away things to make the person acquiesce to what you want to do Mm -hmm. that can that sure. definitely be very manipulative. Although I will I'm say, def- you, yeah, you, you have to no, be I'd- careful because you can, like, there are things where it's legitimate to withhold things. It just depends. Like, if a, if a woman feels like a guy is, like, treated her like shit all day, and then at the end of the day, he's like, okay, hey, let's fuck. And she's like, no, f*** you, dude. Like, I don't think that's, like, manipulative on the woman's part. Like, she might just be, like, upset, and she's like, I don't really feel like f***ing right now. Like, I, I, yeah. So I, those, those dynamics get a little bit complicated, you know? No, what I'm talking about is more so the dynamic where... Um... <sighs> Yeah, so I gave you the example of the guy who wants to sleep with the girl. The girl says no. Then I'm like, cool, like don't don't touch me, don't whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like fine, we can fuck. And then you're like, all right, come over here. It's like it's like once you get what you want, then you just flip it over. It's like it can sure. it can look a little bit sus from from my perspective. But yeah, that's probably the only uh, co- contribution I had to that conversation. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, I think if you're going to sleep with somebody, you should be completely transparent. Just show them the test. And I, I feel like that's the best thing, mostly because. Um, I, I don't know how you can be out here sleeping with people and just assume that they have done STD tests. I think most people operate under a certain level of shame, um, a certain level of like um, discomfort when it comes to talking about sex in general. Mm-hmm. I think seeing the test is like the only real indication you're ever going to have 100% that the person's actually tested or is clean. Or else you're just going on, um, you know, like, oh, do, do I trust me? Well, I'm like, do I? Do you? Do you trust yourself to make sensible like d- decisions sexually? Because I don't think most people make sensible sex decisions. So I don't know. I, I I just think I've actually done it enough times where I was gonna sleep with somebody and I told them get tested. We literally had to show each other each other's papers via text, like screenshots. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to me, this is something I've only been doing recently that I thought most people would be uncomfortable with, mm-hmm. but I've actually learned that most women do appreciate it, which I think is something that you had told me before. Oh yeah, it's that weird. I even felt that way growing up. I think I even made fun of people like Lacey Green talking yeah. about like affirmative consent and shit I was like this shit is so cringe um, I've never in my life lost a woman in the moment because she felt like me like checking in on her was cringe ever but I know there's a lot of women that I f- because I have checked in and we've like pumped the brakes a little bit and then eventually like they felt safe to continue um, now obviously there's going to be like ways to do this that's like okay and ways it's going to be ultra cringe like I'm never going to be like can I touch your leg? Can I touch your boob? Can I put my finger in you? Can I put two? Like, it's never going to be cringe shit like that. But like, yeah. maybe like on first contact, contact, like, is it okay if I have a hand on your lower back or whatever? Like stuff like that. Like, you know, like just every now and then it's just good to know. Right. Um, the thing that I always stress, and it's hard to know this, obviously, because it's like a big social signaling thing is that like the most important thing is the other person always needs to feel like you're going to stop. Um, if they ask, that's like the thing that's important. Sometimes like showing a little bit of restraint makes them feel like you will, if they ask. And that's like, th- at the end of the day, that's the most important thing to keep in mind. Right? Yeah. What do you think makes people so uncomfortable about having those sex talks? Um, it depends. Uh, oh, For uh, uh, women, women are just uncomfortable with everything having to do with sex because um, the problem with women is when you say no to a guy or you try to pump the brakes or you just, even if a woman wants to have sex with a guy but she just wants to be like a little bit chill, is you're, it's there's a huge fear that every barrier is an invitation for a debate. And this is why girls will ghost guys instead of just like saying like, hey, like it didn't work out, like blah, blah, blah. Like when a girl says no, oftentimes it feels like to her, because she's probably had experience with guys do this, that if you say, I don't know if I want to do this right now, the guy will be like, oh, well, why not? Like, didn't you say you were cool earlier? Like, oh, well, I thought everything was okay. Like, didn't you like blah, blah, blah? Like the guy will get whining. And you're in this like really weird position where it's like anytime you try to slow the guy down at all, he turns into this like puppy that's like crying and whining and then you feel like shit. And it's easier to just kind of like shut the fuck up and go along and get fucked than to actually like advocate for yourself at all because the guy's always going to make a big fuss about it so you feel like the reason why women don't feel comfortable bringing this up is because men get weird about it yes absolutely i think so yeah do you think okay do you think that most women are responsible with their sexual health Mm, not really i don't think most people in general are unfortunately okay the the onus is kind of on women because they're the ones that get harmed more than men in these circumstances right i I definitely think they have more to lose absolutely but but why do you think um most people in general are not responsible with their sexual health Uh, i i'm I'm asking about the factors that lead to it we have so much accessibility to std clinics nowadays resources online um if people want they can just talk to their doctor but i feel like there's a reluctance to even do that a lot of times so i'm, I'm asking you why do you think people are, are uneasy about that 
Um, it's probably one of those things that's like multivariate. There's probably like a thousand reasons why. I, I would say like one of the big reasons is honestly education. Like I don't think we talk a lot about this growing up. Uh, like I said, like I was embarrassed. The first time I got an STD, I was like 31 years old and I didn't know anything about it. I was embarrassingly fucking retarded. I was super triggered too. I tested positive for chlamydia and I thought I was going to have it for the rest of my life. I didn't know that mm. you got a shot and it was gone in a week. And I was 31 years old and like having like a decent amount of sex and getting tested and everything. I still didn't know much about like the individual STDs. I can't believe I made it that far without it fucking knowing. Um, that, um, yeah, and I think a lot of people, and oh, I was gonna respond to my YouTube chat earlier. We're saying stuff in, um, in my chat. STD tests in America are a luxury item. The big issue is STD tests costing $750 plus. Neither of those things are true. I'm pretty sure, I think, at least in California, I think you could go into a Planned Parenthood um, and you could get, um, you can get tests for free. And also, I'm pretty sure there are other places where you can get STD tests for like $30 or $40. Um, mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they're not expensive at all. $750 plus. That's if you, I, like, usually when I get tested, I'll do the full battery because I'm checking for herpes and everything because I don't have either of those yet. Um, not that I, I don't even think it's a big deal if you do necessarily, but um, the full battery of like a blood test and everything is usually like three or $350. It's not $750 plus. And that's where the full, like, HIV, um, syphilis, and herpes, and like all the everything else, too. So STD tests are not that expensive. <clears throat> yeah, I, um, I I know that a lot of the cities that I've been in, at least major cities in America, they generally have some clinics that offer this stuff for free, mm -hmm. just because for most of the states, um, STD being rampant are really bad for the healthcare system in general. Yeah, they and are. you know, a lot of people are priced out. So they have a lot of initiatives which offer free testing. So you just have to kind of search that up and look that up in your area. The wait times are generally a bit longer. <laughs> People yeah. there are generally more poor, but if you can handle being around peasants, you guys should 100% go. I go to a private clinic near me and it's like pretty cheap. It's like 50 bucks for the full battery of tests. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so yeah, I, I would tell anybody who's listening, if you think you're priced out, that isn't true unless you're in like a small area. Even then, I don't believe those prices that people mention. So I would just look into Google like free STD checks in your area because generally there's places for that in specific clinics. Mm -hmm. Um. Somebody mentioned shame, and I know as an immigrant, that's definitely true. I think coming from like a very religious background, everything sex related was absolutely taboo growing up. Mm -hmm. And so we had this kind of culture where everyone fucked, but nobody talked about fucking. And yeah. so it was really kind of bad where like, I didn't know about condom use. I didn't know about masturbation. I, I remember the first time I had a wet dream, I was confused what was happening. Like, like I didn't understand any of this stuff. And so I ended up learning from the internet, which is like not always the best way to <laughs> On the forums when I was growing up, like that was a weird place to learn about sex. Guys, we've always given you bad information. So yeah. um, a mixture of like shame definitely plays into it. Um, and I think it's unfortunate. But thankfully through like education, like Destiny mentioned, I did learn a lot. And if you guys are wondering how you guys can broach the subject of STDs to women you're seeing or starting to see, um, if you just let them know in a responsible manner. So like one way I used to do it, or one way I still do it, is I would just tell somebody like, hey, um, listen, I would actually, do, do you ever do this before the first date? No, well, it depends on the types of conversation we're having beforehand, because I don't want to sound like ultra presumptuous, unless I've like already been like fucking, like sexting somebody or like talking hardcore about it. But like, okay. yeah, if, I, if it's like a casual, like if I've got like, let's say somebody at Twitch comes like, hey, we should get dinner. I'm like, okay, cool. And I like DM them and I'm like, hey, just so you know, here's my STD result. <laughs> like that would be like really forward. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. But what one thing I like to do, uh -huh. if I was speaking to somebody for like, let's say if I meet them from online dating. Sure. And we've been talking for a few weeks, like maybe two, three weeks, and we're like of going on a date if i feel like there's a lot of chemistry i'm like listen i think there's a lot of chemistry there's a strong possibility we may or may not have sex um uh, and so i always like to be responsible about this stuff so i've been tested mm -hmm. and if you want to see my test i got it on me and if you haven't been tested um i'd like it for you to do the same generally by broaching it in that manner mm -hmm. um they're very open and very receptive to it especially when i take the initiative and then i show my test first I've noticed that they're like, oh, you're really serious about it. I've had like multiple women say like, oh, you're really serious about this. I was like, yeah, I'm very serious. And like, all right, I'll go get tested. Mm -hmm. And they're very excited about the fact that I'm responsible. And um, and the reason why I, I, I started to see them saying that, why they seemed exciting is because I think for them, they hear folks talk about it, but they very he rarely see folks actually take the tests or show the tests or stuff like that. Sure. So even women are sometimes surprised when I actually show them. So for anybody listening, if you guys are thinking about doing it, it is possible, give it a shot. Uh, but obviously, like Destiny said, don't be presumptuous. Speak to the person a lot. And if you're unsure, go through one date with them and then bring it up. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like, if I was going to see somebody, we've been talking for three weeks, we've already been flirting a lot. Like, you can kind of tell if you're going to fuck. Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? You, you can kind of tell. And so, yeah, I've definitely brought. St- oh, hold up. Actually, let me see if that happens. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. It's just a conversation. But, um, but yeah, I encourage everybody to try to do that. Um, to do that. But, anyways, I won't uh, keep you. I'll let you get to uh, the Mr. Girl video, man. Okay. Have fun. Be careful, bud. Yes, sir. Peace. Inside your body, you you need to you need to be able to believe me when I tell you something. And if you can't, then like I don't want to. Uh, but I was I was really enraged. But we didn't have sex. I was really angry about it. Um. <laughs> Okay. So that, so that was the conversation. Things things in the, the worst conversation. way. Cool. Okay. So, um, I guess we got stuck uh, on the point of whether it is a test. It, it seems like you find the idea of it being called a test, um, like an attack or demeaning, and uh, maybe it is. And then, um, but I kept asking. I kept saying like, it seems like you're upset, and you'd be like, no. And I was like, it seems like you're mad. And you're like, no. And I was like, so you're feeling anything bad about this conversation? You're like, no, no. And then I- immediately after the conversation ends, you like look at your chat and you're like, that, well, that was weird. And you're like, obviously super upset. And then you don't fucking talk to me for three months. So I, it, I, whatever I was annoyed about in the hypothetical idea of dating you has now taken over our friendship or I, I essentially derailed our friendship. At this point, like we, I can't really even think of you as a friend now because we, how can we be friends if you, if you can't even tell me when you're obviously upset with me, um, on stream or off stream for three months. I just, I don't see how you can have a functional, you, we, you can't even be functionally colleagues with somebody if, um, if you're going to be talking about stuff like consent and, and like the difficult political conversations we have that are going to cause hurt feelings and anger from time to time if we can't um we can't talk about it let me know when you're finished I'm he's finished. finished obviously that's fucking obvious go go okay. back and forwards so first off th- that is not how the conversation played out um, you were very specific in, in not just personalizing it, saying that it was me who was doing a test. It was me who was doing a power play. Um, uh, secondly, um, that uh, I initially wasn't, I wasn't annoyed with you. But as the conversation went on, it just seemed like you kept pushing and pushing that it was a test, it was a power play, and um, you were trying to get some sort of negative reaction out of me. And initially, I was just like, this feels very uncomfortable. And afterwards, yeah, afterwards, I was, um, I was uh, irritated. And when you messaged me later, you said, like, we haven't been talking. I said, yeah, I feel like our last conversation left things in a really weird place. Okay, again, um, I, I'm just sorry to interject, but there's a, there's a confusion that we need to correct. Okay, people are saying you were in a relationship, just to confirm, as far as I know, you weren't in a relationship, right? No. Um, at that point, when I was when I was uh, talking with Mr. Girl, as in you weren't in like a sort of romantic sexual kind of engagement, right? You were just friends, correct? With me, yeah, we were not. No, 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 not with Mr. Girl, we, with somebody we've, else, yeah. We've yeah. never had. But people any... are confused. They think you were together. More drama. I'm trying to, no. I'm trying to no, squash drama. No, we've never drama, had okay? any kind of sexual relationship. No. Um, okay, I, uh, I, I. To me, the argument was about a semantic labeling of. You, you, you've, you just described the behavior, which is, I tell men I need time. If they don't accept that, then they're gone. Okay. I, no, I clarified in that conversation. No, you said this I just clarified. Now. Right, but in that conversation... Wait, and, I'm trying and, to say something. You said this just now. You said, if I ask men for time, and if they don't accept this, then they're gone. We, we are, we're done. And you said that that is the reason you were single for four and a half years. I don't know if that was the primary reason, but I, okay, but, but I you, said, but I said don't that. mind being right. You said no, no, there's but a reason you didn't what, mean there's there, a different reason. You meant the, what I just described no, no, is the reason. 
That's one of the reasons, okay, right? That's fine. Right? This way, I'm just, been, I'm, but you I'm, just my, said these things. We, I haven't even my responded. My main point. Can I'm, can I just can I just let me no, clarify? I don't want my, you to clarify. Yeah, I, I let want you to, clarify. I let you clarify. You can okay. let me clarify one no, time. I don't Listen, want you to. I, I want to finish. Okay, split the difference on this. Let me I let me clarify story. one thing. Why? Okay. Because I let you clarify, you, so you get to interject whenever and clarify whenever you want, and I don't get to. I think, no, no, I'm guys, not playing this fucking yeah, game. Listen. No, I get to interject and clarify when you say I'm allowed Jeez. to. Oh, and you're asking to clarify, and I'm saying no. I want to finish my sentence. Okay, I think the issue is this, right? Stardust doesn't interpret. It's quite clear, right? Stardust doesn't interpret what she's doing as a sh what's called a shit test, but you do interpret it as no. That, that's not right? what I'm saying. Okay, okay, right. What are you saying? I'm saying. I'm listening. Okay. From now on, if you allow me to interrupt you or clarify something, that is not a point or, that you get to pull out later and use to interrupt me at a random time. It's called consent. Um, my point that I'm making is that the what you're describing, I'm calling a test. I don't think we really have a disagreement about what is physically happening you're saying if you do this thing then you're gone i put you in this situation or i respond this way if you don't like it you're gone i think calling that a test may sound unfair or unkind and that's that's fine if you don't like that word but the argument last time felt like you, you were arguing about like you couldn't even understand why i would call it that no, I clarified several times throughout that conversation. For other people, it may be a test that you can find the, a clip of me in there saying several times. For other people, it may be a test. For me, it is not a test. For me, it is a need. It is a it's a request, and if Those it is if it's a request that it can't it can't be filled, that's fine. And the the whole reason of me bringing up the four and a half years thing is I am willing to stay single if they're, they're basic requirements that I need, right? Yes, that's and what, that's I'm what willing the, to stay single. That's um, what a test is. So a test can be no. a request. A test can, what Stardust should say here is Stardust should say, yeah, it's a test. Is there, um, um, it's a test, but there's nothing wrong with testing people, right? Like tests are fine. Like, you should, te you should always be testing people. And we always do kind of test people, you know? Can somebody show up on time for a, a date might even be like a type of test. Um, or asking somebody where they want to go might be a type of test. Or asking somebody about their friends or their hobbies. These are all tests. Nothing wrong with testing people. It, now, it can, when you say that, it's kind of got like this weird manipulative bend to it. Um, red pillars will call this sometimes shit testing. Um, although I don't even know if red pillars these days think shit testing is bad. They just think it's a reality that people do it. Yeah. But um there's nothing wrong with like testing people to figure out if you feel like you're safe or like them or whatever. Specifically said that other people, it may be a test. It yes, may be a test. They're using this. For me, it is a need. <laughs> okay, so. those, a test can be a need. Those can be the same thing. They're not mutually exclusive. No, I don't I, you, think you're, so. you're making your okay. okay. test okay. implies a test implies that 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 um you're testing things out like it's not a need necessarily right well, test a test implies in this instance the way i'm using the word means that you have pass fail conditions for somebody else's behavior and um if they don't respond to what you're doing in the way that you want then they fail and then you're done with them so then if you, if I, we just met each other and mm -hmm. I say hello and you don't like the way that I say hello to you, that's a test then. And you decide to not like talk to me anymore. Um, By that definition, anything's a test. So, I mean, yeah, sure. if you want to, I mean, if you want to expand the definition of what a test is, we can certainly do that. But then everything under the sun is test. Yeah, I'm starting well, I think super mad. This situation specific, it, it would be more like if, um, we met and then uh, I stood back to see if you opened the door for me walking into a coffee shop. And I'm like, if you're, if you're a traditionalist who thinks that women can't open a door for a man, then, I, then I'm done. This is our last date. Or if you were like, I'm going to see if he'll let me pay for my own bagel. And then if I say no, I insist on paying for you, then you're like, oh, like those could be, I think it's fair to call those tests. They might also be needs. 
they're also requests. They could come from a very genuine place. But at the same time, it's like... It, it's, it's not like you actually can't be in a relationship with somebody who insists on paying for your food. It's a, it's a conditional thing. It's like, well, this tells me well, everything I need to know. And so I'm done. That, I, like, that's I, a test. Okay. I can not be with somebody who is not willing to, again, and I also explained this in our last conversation. This, you're describing the test now, but you're not really refuting the idea that it mm. is a test. Yeah, can, can, okay, I, can, I, can I start ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Like, this is can, can I finish? Can I finish first? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll allow it. Go on. Okay. So in the last conversation we had, when I talked about needing time, one thing that I also specifically said was that when I explain to somebody that I need time, I'm very specific that I like you. Um, I, uh, you know, this doesn't mean that I am turning you down. I'm very, very interested in you. Um, I, you know, I want to be at this place with you. I just need some more time, right? These are very clear signals that I give to somebody. Um, when it comes to, if you're expanding the definition of what a test is to, to be so broad, what? Uh, th I'm not, this is a regularly accepted definition of test. Okay, I, I think I can help with this. Like, I genuinely can. Right, Stardust. I've got two questions, one question for each of you, okay? So, Stardust, why are you so averse to having, you know, this dynamic called a test? Um, it wasn't even the test part. It was the, it was the implication that it was a power play uh, and that somebody should be right. entitled to be angry with me uh, for, for exercising basic boundaries. You're not sure. I just don't want to get bogged answering. down in the definition of test because that's wait. that's boring, right? Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, go on, Mister. Sorry, sorry, mate. Go on. Clearly, Stardust, you are averse to calling this a test. He just in the asked, way that you wait, mean wait, test. Wait, yes. Wait. He, no, you're not. You're averse to calling it a test in any way. Clearly, you've just made this because clear. Because of you what said, you wait, mean wait, me, by me, a test. I, I want to finish. You just said to call this a test, you'd have to call everything a test. There is no statement you could make that is more, this is not appropriate to call a test than that. Well, what she's when saying is Chud true, just though. Asked you, Basically, everything is kind of a test, right? So why are you so opposed to calling this a test? You said, well, I'm not. So, okay, so then it's is it a test? It's specifically the implication that you put towards it. Well, let's, you, let's have a little good faith. When you call something a test, let's, when you call something a test, Mr. Girl, you are talking about this, uh, it, you Mr. are talking Girl. specifically this about this name. being a Oof. power play, or this is like, that's um, not, that's, I'm going to see okay, uh, let's, how, let's have that a, is how you described it last conversation. That's fine. Let's have a little good faith, though. If you think it is a test, but you don't think it's a power play, why don't you just say that? Um, Because I my definition of test is... It includes that. My definition of test includes that it is not something that's necessary for your relationship. Whereas for me, I feel like this is something that's very necessary for my relationship. Do you believe that when I, I just said, I think tests can be necessary. A test can be a need. I said so that. By so your, wait, wait. by I said, your wait, definition. I, I said that. Do you, do you think I'm trying to trick you or a Trojan horse? The idea. No, okay. I think if that's your definition of, of test, then sure we can go by test. But then we've got another issue here, which is your implication that it's a power play, uh, or your very not even implication, very specific statement that it's a power play, and also your very specific statement that oh, men, sh you know, should have a right to be angry with you if you have a boundary like that. Okay. So, okay, Max, I wanted to ask you. Because you seem very insistent on using this word test. What's the reason you think it's important that it's, you know, defined as, as a test? Um, because it describes how it feels to have it done to you. And it... Um, I feel like you have... Um, never mind. It explains the way, or it encapsulates the way that it's not really true that you don't want to have sex. You, you do want to have sex now, but you don't think it's a good idea. Um, 
And so there's a there's a second order like decision. That's an being... assumption. Well, I'm basing it off of what you just said. So if you think I'm misinterpreting it, that's fine. But the reason I'm calling it a test a test to answer Chud's question is there's a second order thing happening. So like if Shaylin says, um, do you want some ice cream? And I say, no, I've eaten too many calories today. I do want ice cream, but there's another reason I'm saying no, because I'm thinking ahead. And I think test encapsulates the combination of a conditional situation. I want to see, I want to see how you react. Because if you react a certain way, I don't want to be with you. And then also, um, I'm saying no to sex even though I, I want to have it. But I, more than that, I want, um, I want to be able to say no to sex. So I, I'm saying no because I want to make sure that the brakes work. How do I do before this? Before I uh, get on this train. I mean, that may be the case for other people again. That may be the case for other I, women. This is, this is not. But a, that is not, not the case your, for me. I, this is not. A, no, no, no. Woman walks around thinking, "I like to test men and make power plays." That's not how people don't think of themselves that way. That's how we talk about other people. We never talk about ourselves that way. Like the way you're, you're talking about. The, like, the, like, no, this you're is still a, this making is, an assumption. No, I'm going to tell I, you. I'm going to tell you. You are a, making an assumption is about why I no, have I'm, to say that. Why I have to say that is different. There may be people it's, it's, it's who, not, like it, you said, who subconsciously need what you're talking about. But for me, that is not the case. How for would you me, know if you don't subconsciously need something? I am. I am not. Uh, I am not saying that I need more time to see a reaction. How would from you somebody. know? How do you know your I'm, own I'm communicating. I'm communi because I communicate very clearly with my partner. How that, do you communicate hey, something you don't know? I ex I explained it to you earlier how, in this conversation. How can you explain something that you you yourself don't I, know? Uh, again, okay. So uh, let me let me explain to you again. I communicate when I when we re reach this I just, area. I just want to know the answer I to this one question. Say, I specifically say that hey, I do want to be with you. I am interested in you. I understand. I, I mentally I heard right what you said. now I am not okay, then you get it then. Or I what get, do you not I, get? I get your narrative of yourself. But what you just said is I don't subconsciously do this to test people. And my question is, how would you know that? How can you know your own subconscious? Uh, well, okay, so I don't do it to, I, I can't speak on my own subconscious, right? Great. Okay, but well, I'm you just sure did. what so you're let's... saying, what, no, I, what you I'm, sure, I'm sure what you're saying is true for some women, but it is not the case for me because I'm as but, direct as possible with my partners it about is, this it is as I can be. Okay, it is impossible to be direct about your own unconscious motivations because you can't know them. So that is why you'll say something about me like, it seems like Mr. Girl was trying to make me have a negative emotional reaction. You don't think that I am thinking that. You don't think I'm sitting here thinking like, I really got to get a negative emotional reaction out of Stardust. Like, I'm, I'm so fucked up about this consent thing. I hate women. I hate my mother. I, I, I hate Stardust. I'm resentful. I, I want content. You don't think I'm thinking these things. You think that is an unconscious think maneuver I'm making in the conversation unbeknownst to myself you think I am unconsciously trying to provoke you right you don't think I'm no. sitting here think you think I you think no. I'm consciously trying to upset you yes do so you think I'm just like, well, why are you talking to me <laughs> wait are we yeah. I think that's a bit. Listen, maybe not right what now, but in that? the previous in the previous conversation, one hundred percent, you were trying to get a negative reaction. Why, yeah. Okay. Why would I lie about moment, it? Okay. Wait, why? Why would I lie about that? I was fine. I was civil throughout that conversation. You were the one who had uh, an issue throughout that conversation. You were the one who had an attitude problem throughout that conversation. And then you were the one who took every opportunity to twist what I was saying into some sort of power play. I get why you're saying I was trying to upset you. What I don't get is why you think I was consciously trying to upset you and why I would lie about it now.
I think that you were resentful. And whether that's conscious or, or subconscious, I can't really say. Well, you but just you were did. That is the only, po- the only point of contention okay, okay. right now. Let, is, let's was, let's, it, then let's I... clear it. Let's clear it. Let, uh, strike it. Strike it from the record, okay? What what I, I can't say whether it was conscious or subconscious, but I do know you were very resentful in that conversation. And as a result of you being resentful, you decided to um, to purposely be antagonistic with me, purposely call Wait, something purposely, that I'm telling you is pur- not a power purpose, move and telling me it's a power move. Purposely means consciously. So again, my, my the only reason I mention it is not I, you I don't. You can purposely be antagonistic while still not knowing the true motives, right? Okay, that's fine. So the only reason I bring it up is people generally don't think of themselves as behaving badly. They don't think, oh, I'm going to test this person. They don't think, oh, I'm going to rape this person. They don't think, oh, I'm going to manipulate this person. I'm going to interrupt this person. I'm going to not listen to this person. I'm going to try to provoke this. That's not how people think. Right? So when I say that you're testing people, I'm not saying you think you're testing people. And so no no explanation of what you're thinking is relevant. Just like if I say, oh, no, I wasn't provoking you. Here's what I was thinking. It doesn't matter what... I, I can tell you that I, I don't think I was provoking you, but I can't tell you I wasn't doing it. Thinking you're doing something is not the same as actually doing something. And thinking you're not doing something is not the same as not doing that thing. It, it just, it feels like, we're, you know, we should move on from the, <laughs> the, the testing. I, I don't know if we're going to get anywhere with that, but it, to me, it seems like that is the surface level thing. And there's actually much deeper roots here, like the fact that you felt you were being antagonized um, on purpose, right? Like that's going to be upsetting in that moment. Um, so what you're saying, Mr. Girl, is, you know, you weren't intentionally trying to antagonize, but your actions could have antagonized, but you weren't trying to do it in a, like a mean or a harsh way. I was making an aside to show Stardust that she, she too, like every other fucking person on the planet, when you say, oh, this person is doing X, Y, Z, you don't mean they think they're, they don't identify as doing X, Y, Z. So when I say you're making a power play, I'm not saying you think you're making a power play. So you explaining like, no, 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 I'm not testing people. I, I'm really clear about, that doesn't matter. Describing if you think you're testing people is not the same as talking about whether you're testing them. Right. But okay. being that clear with somebody, you're laying everything out. You're laying everything out for them. Like, what what else is there to be said? There's no power play there when I'm being completely open with why, uh, with what my I'm feeling and why I'm feeling a certain way. There's no power play there. It's here is everything for you. Here's all of my all of my shit out in the open for you. And um, and if anything. You know what? You have you have the right to walk away. That's fine. I don't think it is possible to do what you're describing. I don't think you can know your own unconscious. And so therefore it's not really possible to to define your own behavior for someone else, someone else. Like there's people watching this who agree with you, who think I'm just trying to upset you. I'm an asshole, I'm a rapist. And I just can't stand the idea of a woman saying no to me well, not in, being right in friendship or in a relationship or sex or in conversation. That's what they're thinking, right? And no amount of me saying, no, 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 I just explained it. I just explained it. I just laid it all out for you. Why don't you guys get this? That doesn't, that has no effect on what they think of me. My own narrative of myself, you, you, there's no way to be like, I'm so open that everything I think about myself should supplant everything you think about me and i can just tell you what to think about me that doesn't no make, i'm not, not saying i'm interact. not saying that sure i'm not saying that about me as a person but i'm talking about specifically that interaction i lay everything out and if anything that person has the power to walk away or stay um as far as um i don't think you're a rapist right i just think that you're an asshole um and uh and i just think that um but, but do you think uh, i well, think i'm off, an asshole first off <laughs> uh, i do think you think you're an asshole yeah no i don't there's no way you don't know you're an asshole dude i, do, I don't think i'm an asshole i think i'm an exceptionally kind and honest and warm person i think i think one of the most unique no, things about me last, 
That and last it, conversation was really warm, wasn't it? Absolutely. I was like, hey, are you upset? What's going on with you? I checked in with you like 25 you times. Being, you were being such a fucking prick while you were tra- checking in. Oh, let me push this person. Let me tell them what they're doing is a power play and then check immediately after. Oh, are wait, you okay? Wait. Are you feeling okay? How no, the fuck okay. am I supposed well, well, to react well, well, to that? Since my personality is on trial, I'd like to respond to you. I don't okay. think warm does not mean non-antagonistic. Warm does not mean non-confrontational. Warm doesn't mean I'm going to fucking lie to you to protect your feelings. If we're going to have an honest conversation, there people are watching, right? There's a lot of people watching because they want to see us say honest shit to each other. They want to know what we actually think about this shit. So if I think you're making a power play, I'm going to tell you as your friend, as your colleague, I will tell you I think you're making a power play. I'm not doing that because I, I'm Okay, an so can, wait, we, wait, can no, we acknowledge so one thing? No, I want to finish saying what I'm saying. Okay. So yes, when I say I'm warm, I'm saying I am empathetic. I can tell you're upset. I care that you're upset. I'm checking in with you about being upset. I'm opening the floor or for you to talk about why you're upset with me. Something 99.99% of streamers will not do. Most streamers would never, ever give you the opportunity to tell you in real time or to, for you to tell them in real time what you think about what they're doing and how your feelings are hurt and to check in with you. They, they, no, people don't do that. They don't fucking care. They, they, can't, they couldn't even have a conversation if they wanted to. So, yes, I think I am a kind, honest, warm person. I don't think I'm an asshole. Okay, I, I don't so really I get very like far to, arguing about, okay, your interpretation. I, I just want to say one right. thing, okay? Keep I think on. we need to acknowledge one thing, okay? Earlier on in this conversation, today, Mr. Earl said that him describing it as a test wasn't necessarily describing me. He has now moved and he is now acknowledging that it is about me. So I would just like everybody to acknowledge that. No, it's not about what you're thinking of yourself is what I meant. Uh, Yes, I was telling you that I think the way that you interact with men is involves a test that I'm familiar with. And what I said to you is if you wait four dates to have sex, That's less of a test than if you wait 40 dates. And I asked you at some point, you would agree like this is ridiculous, right? I said, if you you asked, if you told somebody, I don't have sex till the 50th date, almost everybody would be like, well, I'm out. I don't want to deal with this. And you agreed with that. So so then I tried to move it to the question is, what level of um, hold your horses there it, it does at what point does it become an acceptable test or an unacceptable test like i, I I'm, Again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I coding think, what i think of you i could tell you what i fucking I think, think of you i think your definition of test is so broad that you can apply to anything and yes with your definition of test we can oh call what God. i said a test i don't i don't have that definition <laughs> of test though to me a test is not something that's that's, they just um, need to agree on what a test is. Right? I, I think Stardust does test. It's fine. You're testing, she just doesn't like the negative connotation somebody. with it. It's not. It doesn't have real stakes in it when you're testing somebody. When you're testing somebody, um, uh, you know, the, they just it, need to agree on it is a test to move it, on. You're just you're just seeing, right? No, but no, when no, it's no, no. when it's a necessary. Okay, okay uh, right. I'm telling you my definition, right? I already got your def- definition. I'm telling you my definition. I don't think you did. What my definition is. My definition is that. Um, to me, this is a necessary need in this relationship. It is not a power play. It's here it is. And, um, and, and, Ooh. and we'll figure out if it works from there or not, the but that's shot. not a test to me. A test is something that, um, is not, uh, is not necessary. I understand that. I think testing and boundaries and. Power plays are a necessary part of relationships. The question is, at what point do they, um, how do they make the other person feel? And do they serve you well? I guess if you're evaluating, like, if it's a good test. Uh, it, the, the best way to test if somebody's a good person to have sex with is to just have sex with them. The reason I'm calling it a test is because that poses a risk to you. Okay, that's... That's not true. There are ways to know if somebody is safe around you before you necessarily have sex with them. Like, you don't have to f- them to figure out if it's safe to f- them or not. Like, there are other ways that you can ascertain that first. Um, a really simple way might be uh, figuring out if somebody's okay not having sex on a first or second date. That might be a way you test to see if it's safe to have sex with somebody. Um, another thing might be uh, suggesting a neutral place to meet or a safe place to meet for a first or second date to see if they're okay with it. And if they're not, that might be a test. Um, there's like, there are ways to 
test without like having to actually do the thing, but. Maybe I'm being unnecessarily pedantic. To be fair to him, he said the best way. No, that's not true. That is not the best. Because best implies a result with a certain trade-off. Like, the best way to know if an airplane will fly is to just fly it, right? I mean, that's kind of true. But there are tests that you can do beforehand, before an airplane ever even gets to the air, before an airplane ever gets to a runway, to see if it'll actually fly or not, right? It's not like you would just go to the most extreme thing. Like, you, you would take stages. In fact, you'd probably argue that's not the best way. The best way isn't to do the actual thing first, right? He didn't say safe, he said best. Best usually involves safe, you f***ing moron. What's the best way to have sex with somebody? Like, the best way to have sex with somebody would be, would be for me to run outside and find the weakest person I can see and get my dick inside of them as quickly as possible. That's the best way. Like, nobody uses best like that. What are you talking about? So instead of emotionally jumping in and seeing what happens, like, dating itself is a test. You don't, you don't just move in with a person or marry them. You test them out for a while. You, but you're, you, what, you're, what you're doing is another step removed back from that of, like, I feel like something bad might happen if I had sex with you. So we're going to delay until I get a stronger sense that that's not the case. And everybody does that. But you, clearly, you are doing it more than most people in our age group. Right? Uh, the, t the test? The delay of sex. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Because in my experience, since I since turning thirty, pretty much every person I've ever dated is like, well, like we yeah we talk for like two or three hours, and I've decided if I want to have sex with you or not. So I just want to ask something important here because I think what I have a problem is Stardust. It seems like you see like a like a power move or whatever is a bad thing. But Mr. Girl, you just said you see it as an essential part of a relationship. So there's one issue here that, you know, you see it as like Mr. Girl as a morally neutral thing, potentially. But Stardust sees it as a bad thing, right? It's, and maybe that's causing the issue. It's a... Power play is, is, is intentional in my head. A power play is intentional. I don't um, think, okay. I didn't mean, I didn't mean. That and a power play a power is play. also, also unnecessary. Power play is also something that's unnecessary. Um, I am calling this a power play because I find it annoying. Oh my god! And because um, I uh, I think it's unreasonable. But that doesn't. Do you, do you mean think it, it's bad? Yeah. Unreasonable. Yeah. I think it's bad. Well, I don't think all. Okay, there. You could you could do something it's unreasonable. And you could do something and then call it something reasonable and or something I think is reasonable and still technically make it a power play. The reason I'm using the word power play, yes, is obviously pejorative. And I'm saying that I have a negative okay. reaction to... But this. you said it's part of a relationship. So how can it be a pejorative when you say it's also part of a relationship? Um, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Okay, I, I'm... What are you going on about, Destiny? Best in no way implies the safest. The best way to see if a bathtub with wings will fly is to throw yourself from a roof while sitting in it. You'll know for sure, but it's hardly the safest way. Best usually implies some form of safety. Like, do you know what the best medication for cancer is? It's a fucking microwave. Go find a person-sized microwave and step inside of it for two minutes and you'll have no more cancer. But it's not very safe for you to do so. Yeah, usually best implies some level of safety. I'm saying that um, that the act of g grabbing power... It's not power, part of a relationship. That's why. I'm saying that the act of grabbing... Well, I don't know what part of a... Most relationships are... Hor I, 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 I think we need to dispel the idea of an ideal relationship that we're talking... There's no such thing. Okay, relationships are horrible and people are constantly terrible all the time. Well, you, there are things you can do in a relationship to gain power. Um, that you should do, that everybody does to advocate for themselves. And then if you do it too much, we, somebody like me will call it a power play. 
That's what I mean. And so it's just a spectrum of like, how, how much do you need this power? And what did you do to get it? And then um, at a certain point, it's like, if you're asking, I, 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 don't, I won't kiss you until we've um, been dating for two years. I think we would all agree, like, that's unnecessarily controlling. But it may be necessary right. to, the, but, it, but it may oh, be necessary. we necess agree. We but agree on it being unnecessary, would, on unnecessary I, being a fundamental would, adjective in this. I want you to just listen for a second. Can you do that? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. I'm so, so confused. How do I make... My point is that at a certain age and a certain maturity level, what may be necessary for you personally and reasonable given your psychology, like it may be that you are absolutely terrified of having sex with anybody that you haven't been dating for three months. So if you're asking me like, what would I, what would my advice to you be? Then it would be like, like don't. I'm, I'm not saying you should just do it. I don't. I don't know what you should do, but it's not. I, I'm not saying that it's right for you. I'm saying that the average experience of dating in your 30s is not really like that. That's more what it's like to date a 14 year old. So like when I was 14 and girls and, and I were like, oh, well, we shouldn't like we're alone. We've been dating for three months, but like we're not going to just fuck because like it's terrifying. So we'll just like make out a bunch, but we're not like that's that's too much. Um, that feeling that feels very like middle school or high school to me. And I'm not saying that you should just force yourself to. But I'm saying the experience of it for me, especially when it's it's like politicized, it it feels it's it's because I'm a man. So as I said, it's a very male experience um, in this country of like pe being 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 told like, well, you might you might be a horrible person, so I can't. I want to have sex with you, but I need to. We need to wait to see if you're a fucking piece of shit. Do we want to compare this to other countries? No. Not really. I was raised here, and so I have the expectation of this country, of, of, of American norms. You're saying it's politicized. You're, you're saying it's politicized because you're a man, because we're in this country, which may be true. But then I would also say that if you look at other countries, uh, you know, it, it just it changes, right? It, it, it's just, it's just this, going this to be may different. Be, this may be part of the reason for your different values. I just want also we you you uh, you basically did agree with me with what you're saying when you talk about something being a power play when you talk about something being a test you agreed with me that it's unnecessary so you contradicted yourself no, earlier I'm, in this I, conversation you said that for, it, it may, may be necessary be... no but you're saying you said earlier you just said that it's unnecessary and it's okay. unreasonable I need you to these are two I adjectives need, I, that I just, you've used I, I need you to adopt a more nuanced and multifaceted lens i am being with, very nuanced with okay, you so then i need you to understand that when i say something is unnecessary ob objectively i'm i'm saying like it is not something that the average person would think of as necessary so if you have ocd you need to wash your hands 500 times a day we call that a disorder because the rest of us are like that's not really necessary but if you have ocd to you it absolutely is necessary and the solution to it may not be to just stop doing it so i'm not saying it's not necessary for you i'm not saying it's not a need it may be absolutely essential for you to not even make eye contact with a man on a date till you've been dating for five years. It is totally possible for that to be your need. But to somebody else, you would be called controlling. So I, I'm speaking, I'm, I, and at some points in the conversation, I'm empathizing with you and I'm talking about your perspective and I'm saying, yeah, it could, a need, it, a test can be a need, absolutely. But that's what I'm talking about, your experience of it. That's your need. A test can also, to the other person, feel like a power play. A need can feel like a power play. A boundary, like to a rapist, even just but saying... But it's not even a power saying, play, so it feels like one, but it's not one. I'm saying there's no objective truth. It I'm feels like it a, a power play, but it's not a power I'm play. Saying you're saying it feels I'm like one, but you're not describing it as a power play, I'm right? I'm saying there's no objective truth. 
to whether something is a power play. It's just a matter of perspective. If you're terrified of sex, then it's obviously not going to feel like a power play. To you, it's going to feel like just protecting yourself. To the other person, it's going to feel like a power play, most likely. It feels well, like it, one, it, but it's not one. But here's there a question, is, Stardust, There right? is no answer to whether it is or isn't a power play. I think you it is. You called it one yes, earlier. Yes. Right? No, no, and no, wait, you're wait, saying wait, that oh it God. feels like one. Listen, yeah. Stardust, 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 this is important. I can ask you an important question here, okay? If you think it's not a power play, but every single person in the world thinks it is a power play, then what is it? It's both. Like, like perception is everything. It's perception both. is sure. everything, right? It's both. In, from your perspective, obviously you're not intending to make a power play, and I've already assured you that this is not what I think of you. I don't think you're meaning to make a power play. I think your experience well, is that... Well, it's contradicting what you said in the past. In the seems, past, so. It seems contradictory if you need to slap a label, an objective label on it. But I need you to peel that label off and understand that there's actually going to be two or three different labels. There's going to be your internal label of your narrative of yourself, in which case you're obviously not going to label your own behavior a power play, maybe after the fact. But while you're doing it, it's very unlikely, especially something you intend to keep doing. You don't think it's a power play. And given how you feel, which I assume is absolutely terrified, then I assume I think that's a good way to think of yourself. However, you should be aware that to the people, the other person in this scenario, they very likely are going to label it as a power, a power play. play. Very, a power play includes the intentionality. No, it doesn't. It does. It doesn't. What is a power play? A power play, it, 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 the, by definition, includes no, the doesn't. intention no, it doesn't. to... it doesn't. It doesn't. Most people, the, we you're, think... Of, you're, again, your, your definition of power play is as broad as your definition of test then. People we think of as controlling assholes do not think of themselves that way. If you have big, we big disagreements over you try like, to definitions, you just ask, asshole. like, well, what do you I define as a really power nice play person. or whatever? I think you just ask that just to get it out of the way. Is it like... I think you can be a nice person, but I also no, think that no, you have a very abrasive I, side to you. I think I am a nice person. I don't think I'm an asshole. You think that. Assholes don't walk around thinking of themselves as assholes. Tell us who's right. Yeah, well, they just, They're communicating past each okay, other, great. so it doesn't even... So, pe so, I, people who make power plays do not think of themselves as people who make power plays. There's still an intentionality in power play, whether you... I don't whether, agree. Uh, I just, whether, I just, no, I, the, whether you, you think... The, the, the thought behind a power play can, can, can be, I want to feel safe. Absolutely. I don't think so. Okay, that's fine. Then maybe we're just using the word differently. But there's okay, no. My, so, my, my point is that you, in order to understand what I'm talking about, you would need to be, and I think you don't want to do this because it seems to make you feel violated, but you would need to be able to hold your perspective that this is a need and a reasonable thing for you to do, and my perspective that it's a manipulative power play and a test that you shouldn't be doing at the same time. And I think it's very uncomfortable for you to do that. So you're kind of flip-flopping between the two, and that's why we're, we're, you're not gonna if get any- If we're talking about like a, you're, if you're we're not, talking not about a mentally any, deranged person- You're that, not gonna get any resolution on what I actually think. Somebody breaking into your car so they can steal money to feed their kids is not thinking of themselves at the way that you're gonna think of them when you find your car window broken. You need to be able to hold both. Wow. In your yeah, mind. I can I can hold that, but but um, power play a power play again. Power play is very different from like the person breaking into your into your car because they they need m money to. Well, eat, you don't you right? don't think about why the person broke into your car. You just think some fucking asshole broke into my car. What's happening to this city? What fucking scum stole my shit? Okay, somebody thinking something is a power play does not mean that it is a power play. But the person doesn't think of themselves as scum who steals shit. They think of themselves as a poor person who needs money. Yeah, and they may not be scum. They may not no be one, scum. No one is scum, Stardust. Oh it's a question of perspective. Perspective, yeah. If you don't ever see the person, you don't have to right, look in their eyes. No, you don't have to specific... look into their kids' eyes. Of course they're going to be scum to you because all, all you know can... about them is that they did this fucking annoying thing, which is why I'm saying... We I don't, can I don't look think at this, people I don't think and this... objectively say that they're scum, right? I think we no, can do that. No, we can't. Yeah, I think no, we can't. we can't. That is... That is that is insane. That is... I'm fucking not. That you're mental. You're that actually a, fucking insane. Let me, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Okay. No. All right. All right. Somebody who no? who um <laughs> who rapes and murders a daughter and a, a mother and a daughter. I think we can say is probably no. Scum. Well, I think can't. that's kind of based. No, we can't. <laughs>
you think it's kind of base. No, we can't call them scum. I think we can. No okay, kind, you somebody, can. If somebody, you can. Give me a if somebody rapes okay. and kills right. You're a, fucking a mother and her stuff, daughter. This, okay? this is what happens when you let women on the internet, okay? Let me ask you this. Give me a definition no, of scum. No, you, you know, actually, every, you know what? what how, listen how, to how, me. How give me a this? definition how of you? scum. Give, okay. No, give me a definition of scum that includes everyone that's scum and excludes everyone that isn't. Go. No, I can't give a definition of scum, but I think we can objectively look at specific actions and say how that's can you scummy behavior. How can you objectively do it if you can't even fucking say what it wait, is? Scummy behavior is different from scum. We can't say whether anybody is scum or not? Or no good yeah, or if bad somebody people. has a pattern of scummy behavior, then yeah, maybe they are scum. Okay, that's fine. You, that's, that's, you, can't even, you can't even explain what it means. That's the that's, problem. That's fine. That's, 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 not, not, that's, okay. not, that's not the problem. The problem is that definitions of the, like that when you put a label on somebody, it's a little bit more complicated. They, people have to have a, a, uh, a, a pattern of behavior, right? Okay. To really fall into certain specific labels, something as, as extreme as calling somebody scum, right? Okay. You I have think... to have a pattern of behavior. To, and most people are not scum. It's going to be like a point zero 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 one percent of of anybody okay i think that your perspective is um so you're f retarded okay <laughs> Shut the f up. okay sorry continue no, i'm not okay go on. okay i think that i'll let you, I'll let you have that one i think this system of labeling scum and not labeling scum i think you'll notice if you examine it that um the closer you are to someone the less likely you are to label them scum sure so if one of my best friends killed a mother and her daughter and raped them beforehand, I, w I would absolutely be prepared to see every single person in the country on social media calling them scum. But would I call them scum? Probably not. I okay, I don't know where we're at in the plot here. When we say scum, we mean like bad person, right? A bad person is probably something that we can come to an agreement on. A bad person is probably somebody that makes immoral choices. The implication being that they are a free agent, meaning they're somebody that can choose, and they're not being forced to choose to do one thing or another. So somebody that has the ability to choose otherwise, but continues to make bad choices or immoral choices, we'd probably say is like a scummy person. And if those choices are of a certain gravity, we might even say that person is scum. I think it's probably like an okay I think, we, I think we can agree on that. I think we can. We should be able to say that there are some people that are like bad people, right? Now, maybe now whether you want to have a deeper conversation as well as a person fully bad or how deterministic is the world such that blah blah blah. Like, sure, that's a conversation. Bravs. These things are. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with these guys. They keep encroaching on my territory. I, I probably wouldn't think of them as scum. I would think of. I would think like. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ! Why didn't you? What, 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 what were you thinking? How could you do this? Why didn't you tell me you needed help? Me of all people. How could you keep that you want to do these horrible things? Like, that's how I would be thinking of them. I would think of them as, as like a, 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 a broken, twisted, fucked up person, but not scum. I would, I would never dismiss, yeah. you wouldn't dismiss somebody like that. And you'll notice when we first met, you talked to me. We had an intimate conversation. Oh, wait, hold on. There's a possibility that the closing of Kanye West's bank story is more complicated. Ye or yay, it's yay, right? Been trying to move his money from JP Morgan, so this ain't new, just the timing. On CNBC right now, Kanye West just said he's moving his money from JP Morgan to Bank of America, possibly because Jamie Dimon never called him after he deposited 140 million at the bank. Oh shit, maybe there's some weird shit going on. Diamond? Diamond? I don't know if to pronounce this dude's fucking name. Why did Ahmad delete a post that shared a new yay statement? Maybe change it to potentially misleading, but why delete it weird? Sounds like diamond. Diamond. Okay, there you go. And then suddenly everybody- Oh my god, there's an hour and 15 minutes left. I don't know if I can finish all this tonight, guys. I might just go halfway. But it was calling me scum, but you didn't You didn't think of me as scum. You, even, you didn't even really disagree with um, their criticisms of me. You were just like, no, but I, I know him. Once you know somebody, you don't call them scum. And that, that's why I'm giving the carjacker analogy is because all you see is you see their semen stains left on your car seat because they, they're a schizophrenic person, right? But if, if you... Wait, what, is, what are the semen stains? What's say say a car, somebody broke into your car and jacked off on your car seat. You're going to call them scum, right? But if you're their mother 
and you watched them slowly develop symptoms of schizophrenia throughout high school and then you had to like they, they, you had to send them away in this heartbreaking moment where they 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 wouldn't stop shitting on your floor the schizophrenia comment that mr girl is making is because i think whether he knows it or not he's operating on the same definition schizophrenia implies a lack of agency so earlier i said that we probably see a bad person as somebody that is an agent that makes bad choices that could otherwise choose not to. A schizophrenic person is a person that's probably um, losing their agency. They're not able to choose otherwise. Hence the um, sympathy we would have for that person. Or trashing your house, you had to send them some, some swanky treatment facility, then they escaped. Now they're homeless. You don't even know where they are. And then somebody says, oh, so we found your piece of shit son. Like, no, you're not going to think of them as scum. No, Cause you, cause you, you, know you them. won't. Because you know right. them. Right, but again, so, so again, all, again so what all I'm of saying, this, all my... of this I, I just want to bring it back to, when I'm saying you're making a power play, I'm saying from the perspective of the person you're doing it to, it feels like a power play. I am still able to hold your humanity and your psychology and all of your feelings about this in my head at the same time that I say it's a power play. Bullshit. But I, I think it's bullshit. I think fine. I think everything that's fine. you're saying is absolute fucking bullshit. That's fine. I, I would like you. I would like to finish my. I would very, like to finish my. Okay, what ahead. I'm saying now. Okay. I can call you. I can tell you that you're making a power play while still having empathy for why you personally would need to do that. My guess is that there is a lot of terror and trauma involved, and I. And I, I get it. I get I, it's not hard to extrapolate why somebody would need to be so protective and careful around sex. I understand that. But I'm saying that from the perspective of the, the other person, it can be really fucking annoying. <laughs> it's yeah, but it being fucking annoying isn't a fucking power play, Max. That is literally what makes something it's a power not a play. fucking power play. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 uh. Let me finish what I'm saying, okay? Okay. So, can you finish it? With, can you finish it while with the this idea in your mind? You are going to have a definition of your own behavior of not being a power play. I'm not other... even fucking talking about my own fucking behavior, dude. I'm talking a power play again. There's no such thing as an actual power play. There's no such thing as an actual power play. There, there is an actual power play. This is just, okay. again, this do, is this turning into to give an you, hour do you want me to long. Give, do, you want me, do you want me to give you a scenario in which I somebody... don't give a fuck about your scenario, bro. Well, you just uh, asked like, a question. Can... You asked a rhetorical no, question. No, what I, let but, me but finish what I'm fucking saying. I let you speak. Just like, okay, so let me, let me, let me finish. Go on, go on. Okay. Um... I think there are objective things you can say are power play. No, there, there are aren't. objective things you can you can look at behavior and say, hey, that you, behavior is objectively no, kind of fucked up. That's not true. Uh, you're interrupting me. Is it, no. Uh, okay. Do you know what objective means? Uh, oh, you know what? Shut the fuck up, Shud. <laughs> I'm just. I just think you're making really bad points. I think. I think you're. I think you're. I think you're a fucking idiot, Shud. How about that? Okay. So um. Uh. uh so again, okay. there are specific things that people do. If somebody calls you the N word and says it with vitriol, you can say, "Hey, they did something that objectively seems pretty racist, right?" They, they're calling you the N-word uh, uh, with vitriol. They're saying it. They don't know you. Objectively, you know that that is a racist thing. They have committed a racist action, that's a, right? That's a, that's a tautological. Objectively. That's a tautological definition. Calling someone the N-word is most people's definition of racist. So, yes. However, when you're reading into how to evaluate their motivations for doing so. There are, again, their uh, motivations, uh, regardless, we know that that, that, that um, uh, like the motivation there was specifically, uh, if they're saying it with vitriol, if they're saying, if they're calling you the N-word with yes, vitriol okay. and you are a person of color, you know that the intentionality is there. The, but the word power play implies a moral or, um, usefulness evaluation made on the part of the person using the word where racist doesn't really calling someone the n-word with vitriol is tautologically definitionally racist whether something's a power play depends on the evaluation of the speaker the person who's labeling it a power play has to evaluate well how I don't much think how, so. 
Again, I think there are specific actions you can look at. You can look at the intentionality and the circumstances around that action and specifically label it something objectively. You can label something some things, yes, but power play specifically I is an I think you can do the same thing with power play. Power play specifically means that the person using the word has made an evaluation that the maneuver is unreasonably power grabby. So if you so if somebody says, "Hey, can I can I have sex with you right now?" So again, say, unreasonable. If if you say, can, someone says, "Can, can I have you sex explain with you what right they're now? saying?" I don't think anybody. The problem is they're like, they're just ultra super hung up on these like definitions, and that's 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 it. That's really it. They're just ultra super hung up on these definitions. And you say no. Most people are not going to look at that interaction and think of call it a power play. If if you say, can I have sex with you in the next three weeks, and you've been dating the person for several months, and you say no, at that point, people are going to be like, well, that, now that is a power play. Like, you you're, you just will never have sex. Like, why are you even in a relationship in the first place? That's when you'll, you'll start, you people, if you tell people that story, they'll be like, I don't know if you should be with this person. I don't even know if they like you. I don't know what's going on, but that's, that's weird. That's not good. So if you if you say can I have a there hug and your partner says I want space like you can't have a hug right now is that a power play to some people yes to some people no if you say can I have a hug ever and your partner says I don't know we'll see most people then are going to I see you opening your mouth shut shut the fuck up I don't want to hear a word out of you <laughs> so I'm trying to demonstrate to you that power play is not like the term racist. It implies an evaluation of the whole situation, the relationship, and in including the context. If we were in a different country, like if I went to Japan, I assume that there are more people like you in Japan than people like me. I assume this is a more, more of a cultural norm to be like, oh, I know we shouldn't. I don't want to. Even when you're 30, even when you're 40, even when you're 50. And so it, it probably would, wouldn't make as much sense to call it a power play there because it'd be like, well, this is just how it is. Bro, these material testing packs are killing me. A lot of people in my chat are asking you to step on them, Stardust. How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm not interested. What did I tell you about talking? My apologies. Continue with your amazing points. Okay, 4,000. Is that sarcasm? <laughs> no, a British person being sarcastic? Absolutely no way. Okay, so if you're being sarcastic, you can just leave the fucking call. Like, I, I'm, I'm not interested. <laughs> oh, no. Jesus. Instead of... Ex I'm just trying to have the conversation move forward. Okay, you can, you're... Based on the three months of silence from you, I'm, I don't think that you are emotionally or psychologically ready to have a debate about this. Jesus Christ. I think what you should have done is as soon as you realized it was going to make you flip out is you should have been like, you know what? I can't really handle talking about this. Oh, and that would no. be absolutely a respectable thing to do. What's not respectable is for you to destroy our friendship because you are forcing yourself to do something, ironically, that you actually don't want to do. You no, don't want to talk. You don't want us, to have this debate. I'm it's fine with like, us having a, our conversation, but it I, doesn't again, seem like it. I would. It, well, I would why the I fuck did point, you stop talking to me for three months? Obviously, this topic is traumatic for you, I, and you can't talk I, about it. I, I, it's not that I stopped talking to you. It's just I didn't. I didn't really make too much of an effort. I still. No, when we I, I, interacted, I, asked, I asked you to talk about this several times and to try to repair our relationship, and you just either didn't respond. And I was busy. Okay, fine. Maybe you're too busy to be friends, or maybe this topic is too traumatic for you, and you shouldn't fucking be debating about it online. Uh, okay, so you okay, <laughs> if we can continue Jesus our Christ. conversation. You specifically brought up. I feel again, like I'm raping you. Keep, you. You're not oh raping me. It feels dude. like I am. Okay, it feels, it feels like a, it feels. It feels like you actually okay, can't just, handle just, talking about this. But you're pretending. You're talking pretending about you can. It, it feels like it feels like having sex with some. It feels like having sex with somebody okay. who is dissociating and shuddering That's, and shutting down, right. and their eyes are rolling okay, back so in their head, I mean, and then they're like, "Oh no, I'm fine. I can keep going." It's like well, you're being I, I, really right, melodramatic I, right now. You're being very melodramatic. You destroyed our friendship. Our friendship was important to me, and now we're not fucking friends anymore. I don't think it's melodramatic. Our, our friendship was important to me too. Great. So uh, I don't think it's melodramatic to tell you that I think that you, I think you destroyed our friendship because you, you tried to force who, yourself who to have a conversation. You, cause you have no fucking boundaries. I get why you have to hold people at arm's length when you start dating them now. Cause Jesus you don't know how to say Christ. like, Hey, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> oh, God. Let's, just, uh, let's just calm it down a bit. We're getting a bit heated. No, I'm, I'm fine talking about this. Yeah. 
of course I'm here. What, what do you, you want me to, like, one of my friends stop being friends with me because I made her mad. Why is my throughput so her. bad on my bots here? Why, why, okay, but do you, need to bring up, do you need to bring the rape thing into it, though, Gus? Yeah, I think it's related. Absolutely. Okay. I don't think so. Why? You did to me the exact fucking thing I was saying I don't like being done to me. I failed your test. Now we're not friends anymore. I just, uh, you know. Of course know, it's tested. Uh, it's so fucking disingenuous. You're I such a fucking viewed, liar. You sat there. You I looked, me in, the, you looked me in the fucking eye and you told me you weren't upset 20 times. And then you ended the call and immediately say, yeah, he, I was upset. He was trying to get a negative reaction on me. You lied to my fucking face and you ruined our friendship as a result. Of course I'm heated. So in, in the moment, like I said, initially in the moment, I was not aware that I was upset. But you became aware at some point and you did not talk to me about it at that point. So, yeah. And, and, uh, and, so what kind of friendship I can just, we have if we're going to talk, how can we talk about rape and argue it, about our dating, so, dating because, habits? But if we get mad at each other, we, we stop already, being friends. Because we were already in the middle of a very heated discussion, a very tense discussion where you were talking about things that I... Uh, have find necessary are unreasonable and unnecessary and a power play. Yes. I'm already in a position where I'm arguing with you about something so tense. So if you're asking me, hey, are you mad at me? I'm not mad at you, but I'm incredibly uncomfortable at that point. I That's don't think fine. I realized I was mad at you. Okay, then you could have said you're uncomfortable. I'm saying you could have said any of this at any point. So the reason, right. I'm, and heated, afterwards, the reason I'm heated I'm right now is that you did not do that. Yeah, I didn't know what my, my feelings were completely at that point in that's time. That's fine, but that's not my fault. <laughs> so I want you to look me in okay, the eye, look me, look me in the eye and tell me that you think if you told if you knew how you felt and you told me how I felt, tell me you think that I would have just kept pushing on. Um, no, I don't, I, you know, if, if I knew how I felt and if I knew I was that uncomfortable, we would have and talked I told about you it. I was yeah we would have probably talked about I would have, it I would have in empathized some other way. with you I probably would have even taken yeah. care of you I would have helped lead the conversation that's, to well a that's place. fucking gay and I don't need you to take care of me but okay yeah go somebody should and you didn't <laughs> this is so and now dramatic. you're saying I wrecked our friendship when by your own admission if you had been more attuned to your own feelings set boundaries like you should have and talked about your feelings like you were invited to multiple times this wouldn't have happened so i don't think it's my fault you know i tried to be as honest as possible with you during that conversation and just because i don't know my exact feelings in that point in time doesn't mean that either one of us is at fault i wasn't it certainly blaming doesn't mean i'm at fault I mean, I wasn't blaming you for our relationship fall, falling apart. You are. Apart. You, you were blaming me because you said I, in the conversation, I'm trying to make you have a negative emotional reaction. I I'm, do think that you no, were trying I'm not. to make me I'm just have trying a negative to not, emotional reaction. I'm just trying reaction. to not be controlled and silenced by somebody who is signaling that they're uncomfortable, but who won't say it. I got a lot of flack from my own audience after that. A lot of people were like, you could tell she was upset. Like, yeah, that's why I asked her if she's upset. But apparently, according to most people, it is the job of the man to determine your I unconscious was feelings. I aware. I know. To determine your unconscious feelings and then make a decision for you about whether or not you consent to an interaction. I don't think you, I don't think you need to make no, a decision absolutely for me. Fu great. So that I didn't. So I just said, okay, well, then I guess yeah, we keep talking. so that's fine. I checked in with that's you and fine. I said, okay. We kept talking. I get, yeah, we kept, we kept talking, 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 but I and still think that and you're you fucking... Stopped, but and that's you stopped not speaking the issue to me for here. Three months as a that's result. not the issue here. The issue okay. is I took issue with you calling something that is necessary for me as unreasonable, a power play, and unnecessary. Okay, yeah, I don't. Uh, There's no I, when, intentionality okay. behind what let me, I'm doing. Let me let me tell you something. To be a power play. Let me tell you something about the Mister Girl friendship experience. If you think that being my friend means that if you describe something as necessary to you, then it is unassailable. And I'm not going to say, well, this is controlling behavior. You're being possibly abusive. What if it's necessary for you to hit your partner? You want me to tell you, oh, well, if, if you say it's necessary, it's if, if you really if you really lose your shit, wait, you do, wait, wait a second. You, what if it's necessary for you that. to cheat? What if it's necessary for you to steal or okay, pathologically lie? And what Stardust is saying, come on, I, that's about I, I want to finish. I want to yeah, finish what I'm really saying. Fucking... I want to finish what I'm saying. The idea that something being or feeling, because it's not, it's not actually necessary, right? Like, 
this is this is a feeling. It's the word necessary in this case is used to mean I am very very uncomfortable with this thing, and so this is how I'm going to behave. It's a need. We can call it that, but it's not it's not literally like it's not like food or air or water. The idea that if you describe something as a need, then therefore I'm not going to give you any negative feedback about it. Then yeah, don't be my friend. You can you you know what you can give negative feedback on it, okay. but then I still am entitled. I am still entitled to tell you that I think you're fucking wrong, and I think I think it, I think you're a fucking wreck of a human being if you think that something like that is a power play. That's fine. You could tell me that, and I would still be friends with you. But you didn't. Instead, you dished me. Yeah, uh, you are you are uh, so quick to look for somebody to blame in this situation when that doesn't need to be the case. No, once again, I have empathy for you. I understand that this is like a big. I am not blaming. I am I not blaming you. I know. Well, you for did blame our you, friendship you, falling apart. I just think that you're fucking wrong. I know you. You you're not blaming me. You're just saying I'm a wreck of a human being. Jeez. You're in an ass. Well, I think. But you're not blaming I, me. I mean, I, I have empathy for you, Stardust. I understand that this I'm is friends with lots of, I'm friends with lots of assholes. You are not the only okay. one. I understand. We've got another one in the call with us right now. So. I understand that this is an invisible wall for you, <laughs> that you that we ran into and that you didn't see it coming. You didn't know it was there. And I don't even think you knew we ran into it until weeks later. Oh, I have no. empathy for you. I, I think I even understand why it's there. I think I can probably guess why it's there so i'm not i'm not i'm not a classic empath strategy again, i have your perspective in I'm mind sorry, he's gonna get my but my perspective is but you are blaming me no i'm not my per, my perspective is that this you went immediately me. to blame my this really did my perspective is that you ditched me and i'm very angry at you about it sorry for ditching you i don't want your apology but i felt very very uncomfortable and okay. that was the way that i knew how to deal with it i understand that I know that you are conflict avoidant specifically about this topic and it's very uncomfortable for you and that you probably were incapable of talking about this or having this conversation until now. I believe all that. And yet I'm still enraged at you because you ditched me. Sure. You can be enraged at me. And I'm, I still think that. Okay, so we both have our own. Yeah. I think that you're so stop incredible. To... I, something that I'll say <clears throat> um, at the risk of, <laughs> I'm trying not to trigger the fuck out of Max. I don't know if he's still listening. I, I don't think it's ever good to use, or let me, I'll phrase this in a negative way towards myself. If I'm using psych terms at somebody in a personal conversation, it's usually because I'm just trying to trigger the fuck out of them. <laughs> like usually, once we've started bringing out the psych terms, that conversation <clears throat> is uh, is over, it's fucked. Um, I think when you start in on like diagnosing somebody, like you're conflict avoidant, you're blah, blah, blah. Like I think that you kind of like, you've destroyed, you've destroyed the ability to like, progress anymore in the conversation because you're essentially saying like you're so fucking retarded you don't even understand yourself as well as I understand you and I'm shutting this down for you because you're so stupid it's kind of what it, I think is the feeling um, that most people would probably have Re stop trying to replace my perspective with yours and either uh, I'm not trying to replace your then, then perspective. fucking empathize with me and listen to me or just stop responding I'm not saying that's what he's doing I'm just saying I think that's what most people will feel like that's what I would feel like and I think I understand that a lot of people would feel like that so, like, if if I'm ever doing that in a combo, I mean, Melina can tell you. <laughs> if I'm ever doing that, it's just because I'm trying to trigger her. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm moving into an asshole mode now. Fuck you. I think that it's ridiculous to think that... That's not empathetic. Uh, again... Uh, I I can be empathetic towards a whole lot of things, but when something is being an actual need, when something is an actual need, you lost empathy. I, yes, you lose oh, empathy. Uh, you, the topic can, is so triggering that you can't use, be empathetic. We could use the same opposite uh, opposite interaction, right? Somebody says, "I I need time. I'm really interested in you, but I need time." And that person decides to push that boundary regardless, right? That itself could be a test. Is that not a test? Sure. Is that not a power play? Yes. I'm not the one who fucking freaks out when I'm told that I made a power play. That's you. 
So flipping this around isn't really going to work. I'm still willing. I'm a- still willing to entertain ideas that I'm a manipulative asshole. That I was trying to provoke you because I'm angry at these women who control me. That I'm taking I shit. That I'm taking. That I'm, wait, me. shut the fuck up. Let me finish. That I'm taking shit out with Shaylin out on you. All of these other implications and ideas, or that I just hate women. I'm willing to entertain these ideas, and if you want to say them, I will listen to them. I'm not the person who sh- is shutting down and refusing to you talk to you about this shit. You are being such a victim right now. You are being such a victim. Um, I think that... Uh, what does I, that I mean? Think that- yes, I'm angry at you for ditching me. I have few friends in this space, few friendly yeah. colleagues, and you... I was you- still friendly with you. I may have been more distant. No, I still you, no, was supportive no, of you. It's over. It's over. I, I can never trust you again. Jeez. Okay, fine. Okay, there must be a way back from the darkness. Surely, come on, like that. To what? A way, a way back to what? No, <laughs> to fr- I can. We can never be friends now. We can be friendly, distant colleagues, but I'm never fucking relying on you for anything. Absolutely not. All right, that's fine. I'm not relying on you either. So no shit. That's why we're not friends. Because you don't. You didn't trust me, and you didn't rely on me. I held my hand okay. out for I'm a long time, and you never took it. So yeah, that's like. I thought this was to fix this, and you're saying it seems like you're coming to this and there's no solution possible. So what's if, the point if of this is where Stardust is after three months, then no. Why would I want to? Why? What, what do I get out of a friendship? Like, so, like, yeah, maybe, um, maybe in I'm five years. I'm being so honest to you, and this is like, I, I feel like I'm being incredibly honest with you about how I'm feeling now, and you're just here. Yeah, I mean, I get it. You're upset at me for ditching you, but I'm trying to be as honest as possible with no, you. No, you, I, I and, told you uh, that you ditched me, and you said you're such a victim. No, you're 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 absolutely unempathetic. You're you totally you're totally being a victim. That's fine. You can laugh at me and call me a victim, but that's why we're not friends anymore. Next time, if you're wondering <laughs> a few years down the line, hey, how come I'm not friends with Max anymore? Take this fucking moment and play it back in your mind. When I told you that you ditched me, I told you I was hurt. I came to you vulnerable and honest, and you laughed at me and called me a victim. Okay, I'm sorry for hurting you. Um, I don't want I'm, your apology. I want your empathy, but you don't have Fuck, it. Fuck, what's the song? I, okay, Not for me. I, Not bury me, topic, bury me. I understand Fuck, that this there's topic a meme there. Like a, it, uh, when we talk about this topic, big red lights start flashing I in your brain. And you, Somebody find it. There'll be a way to do it, okay? Probably can't empathize with me. But th- then what you should do if you want to have friends... Said, carry me, carry me. You should probably tell them not to give Jeez. you feedback about this because you can't handle it. And you will torch the relationship if, if you hear anything you don't like. That was it. Yeah, um, I know, but I, I missed the moment. I think we had a very lengthy discussion last time we talked about this topic. I think that's an indicator that I can have a conversation about this. Um, and I was just uncomfortable. Um, again, I think We had a looping that conversation that went nowhere because you can't handle we talking did. about it. Yes. We, well, we had a looping conversation because we just have fundamental differences on that's our definitions. That's not a reason to loop. We can have fundamental that differences. Is. You could have just said, okay, I get why you're saying it's a test. Do you get why I'm saying it's not? And I would say yes. Uh, but see, you weren't even at that point either. Absolutely, I was. I'm f- I, my, my you problem, were not. My problem you wasn't not. that- I specifically said so many times during that conversation that this may be a test. This may be a test based on what other people do um, by by certain definitions, maybe. But like uh, for That's me, it was not that. That's not the same thing I'm saying. That. I'm saying that you were not capable of or interested in acknowledging that I have a perspective and that internally, given my psychology and how I feel, my, my perspective makes sense to me. So the way to get past an impasse like that is you say, okay, I get why you're not calling it a test. I understand it's a need for you, but do you understand from the other perspective why it does feel like a power play? And then you'd say yes, and then we'd fucking move on. But you're not, you're not able to do that because you find it very threatening. I think that it your, is your unreasonable. Your hold on your ability to say no to sex is so fucking tenuous that you can't acknowledge any perspective that might call it a power play or manipulative or controlling at all because I think you feel like then you just you 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 won't be able to say no. But um, I think you have I, every right to say no to sex even if every other person on the planet gets together and votes and says Stardust shouldn't be able to say no to sex. Stardust has to have sex. I think you should still be able to say no. I think that is your your right and your boundary that you should hold for yourself no matter what anybody ever says to you. Okay. I mean, was there anything that could have happened here that would have actually fixed this? It sounds like it was over before it started. Yes, you already said that and I already responded. Yes. No, but what what specifically? 
Oh, you mean if, if she well, said, I, well, you know, what, she what never should Stardust you. have said if she wanted to be friends with me? She should have come on the call and said, like, listen, before we start talking, I want to acknowledge that I've been avoiding this conversation for a long time. You reached out to me several times and I basically ditched you and I don't even know if we're friends anymore, but I really want to make this work and I really want to figure this out. I don't, I don't want an apology, but an acknowledgement that like you, you completely withdrew from me. And, uh, and also that I did it at a time when you needed a friend. Damn. I see that now. But I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the last conversation. You're right. I was upset. I didn't say I was upset. And I did say it afterward. I said it publicly, behind your back. But I haven't been ready to have this conversation with you to your face. It's something I'm working on. And then either A, I'm ready to have it now. Or B, you know what I've learned about myself? I can't talk about this. I cannot talk about this, especially in front of an audience, and especially with somebody who's going to be as forceful and aggressive with their opinions as you are. It's not a good idea for me to do this. So in order to protect myself and to preserve our friendship, what's left of it, I would like to rebuild, but I, I can't talk about this with you. I can't just casually debate consent. I've learned this about myself. Jesus. Not with you. Um, okay, so that's what I, think should, that that's what a, I, I think there's a lot of blame being thrown around right now. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to answer Chud's question. What could Stardust have said to make me feel like a glimmer of hope for our friendship? That would have been that. Sure. I guess, um, you know, if it, Stardust, is there anything you would have expected? I mean, I don't know. Like, it seems like it's kind of Mr. Girl that's setting the boundaries of what is and isn't acceptable. Do you, not, do you have any ideas on that? I think that, uh, I think that Mr. Girl is very um, upset. I didn't, I didn't mean to... Uh, make him feel abandoned in his time of need but um yeah we can see a hog dude like what the fuck uh i didn't mean to make him feel um upset in his time of need or in a time where he felt very lonely but um there's a lot of uh you know i'm not i'm not here to throw blame around right i'm i'm just not i had an issue with what was said in the last conversation we had and uh, I've voiced some of those issues today. And yeah, that's all I can really say about it. Whoa. Wow. Okay. I don't know. Is, is that it? I don't know if there's anything else to say. It sounds like Mr. Girl is pretty, pretty certain about how he feels mm -hmm. about this, I guess. I think, I, think I mean, I think that's fair, you know, like, um, the, the door is always open. Okay. There's about to be ninjas. But, but, if, it, it, but if you are calling this now, the door's uh, open no to, problem. For, for what? Uh, okay. Uh, let me finish what I'm saying. Um, the door is open if Jesus. you want it, right? Uh, but um, I am certainly not forcing anything, and I'm fine if things have to be cut off here. So. Jesus. I'm not saying I'm cutting you off. If you want to be friendly colleagues, we can be friendly colleagues. But we can't. We're not friends, though. A no, friend... I don't think we're friends. I, I think um, sure. I think you've made that very clear in this conversation. Well, did yes. you think we were friends a week ago? Like, how the fuck could it? How how? Could I thought you we call... were friendly. I thought we were friendly at least. Well, did you? Yeah. I, I'm not. That's not the word I use. The word I use is friends. So like usually. I thought if we were distant if, friends. Distant friends, yeah. Even a distant friend, I think if they get banned from YouTube and have this gigantic fight with a bunch of fucking Nazis who potentially t ruin their career, you you think you would like reach out and be like, "Hey, how are you doing?" Oh man. Right. Even a distant friend would do that. We're not friends. Any 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 semblance of what a friend would do has been overshadowed by this conversation. And now you're going around uh, right now in public saying that it's not overshadowed by y y this conversation being too triggering for you. No, suddenly your entire perspective on me as a person has 180. Now, it's, now our friendship and your ability to, to be there for me is overshadowed or even respond to my DMs is overshadowed by me trying to hurt you. It's not that the topic is too triggering and you're unaware of your own fucking feelings about it. It's that I am trying to hurt you. That's why uh, we're not okay. friends. That doesn't make any fucking so, sense. How can you possibly, how could you possibly can call me a distant friend when this is how you act? I, um, okay. So when I talked about this in public, um, I talked about how things are weird between the two of us. Um, and, uh, I don't think I put all of these uh, 
uh, things that you're saying on it. You made a thumbnail immediately saying that the, the asking if the bridge was burned. You didn't respond to my DMs, and like I said, when I very publicly had this had this perfect. had this absolutely awful thing happen to me, you did not reach out. Um. Okay. So that to, I, there's no definition of friendship that I have that that meets. Sure. Sure. I, I, you're, you're saying it meets yours. Um, I mean, I I can't really say like uh, I can't really say because I I mean I felt bad for you and I said that it was wrong, right? But um, but I don't know. I guess we we were just distant, you know. It just didn't feel like it. Just okay. You know, listen, let's you know, address the question. Other the... Do you think that I'm you've not been sure a... with the. Do you think that you have been a friend to me for the last three months? I think, I think again, I considered you a distant friend. I didn't consider you a close friend. Okay, I'll stop asking since you're not going to answer. Ooh. Okay, okay, here's my question, right? Because I do, like, what's what's the reason you didn't reach out when Max was going for all that terrible shit? Um, I... Uh oh. I, um, I I just figured I would voice support for him, and I thought that that was appropriate um, voicing support. Um, and I thought that it was wrong. Um, it, like, Wait, you sorry, know, so you, thought, you did tweet about it, right? You tweeted about it, correct? I, I tweeted and I, and I sp said stuff on my stream and stuff, but I didn't reach out to him okay. personally. Yeah. So I, I just felt like you know we that was kind of the stage where I was at with it. That's pretty much it. I didn't really think. Okay, Beyond someone in the that. chat is saying Stardust never thought of Mr. Girl as a real friend. Is that true? That's not true. Okay, so let's let's put that to rest. People are saying Mr. Girl is always so so much more involved in his friendship, emotionally involved in relationships with people, than the other person is. That's not true. I w I thought that you were one of my closest, if not my closest friend, creator content creator friend uh, online. Okay. I'm, I'm just, you know, like, I, I guess the thing is, mind, based on what you said, it seemed like the starters didn't even mention it, but she did at least, like, tweet about it, right? So even if she felt uncomfortable talking to you directly, at least she said something to kind of show support for you. That's something well, yeah, that and I, and I, do. That's not, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I have a lot but, of, I have a lot of friends. Yeah. And, um, most of them don't tweet about me. Ooh, burn sick. But all of them asked me, how I was doing. Let it hang. Yes. Yes. I Chad Logic did. Okay, we talk we talk, uh, we talk often. Did you? I think I did. About how both of I mean, us yeah. are doing. Like fucking friends do. But we haven't had like some rift that's caused us to break apart for a period of time, right? Uh, sure. If I do something that makes you ang well, I don't think that would happen because I did do something that made you angry, and we had a fight on stream. You yelled at me that you, I, that you were angry at me, and you told me why you were angry at me, and then we talked about it, and then we talked about it off stream too. I, I think I That's think that's what I would expect very, of like, a friend. Like I, 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 I think this is very disingenuous, though. Like I, I have uh, supported you even when it has gotten me so much flack, right? Um, uh, way before anybody else did, and I continue to support you publicly, even though we had our falling out. You're so more, I don't think this is necessarily more, fair. You're more afraid of this topic than you are of child porn catching flack. Oh fuck, never mind. Um, I mean, honestly, I think the most flack I, I have ever got was uh, from uh, my association to you and my association to Richard Spencer. I know. So they, I don't think yes. you're afraid. I don't think that scares you. I think this topic scares you. Um, I don't know that it scares me. I think I was just very uncomfortable and I didn't know how to proceed with our with our friendship, essentially. But I okay. do think that it's a little bit disingenuous to say that. Like I didn't care about what happened to you. I did clearly care. No, I, I know did you care. Clearly, voice support. If, if you, you didn't know. Care. Hey, what? What do you mean, what? Why are you so rude? 
Well, you see, I've grown bored of you. So Really? Yeah, I could tell yesterday. Holy fuck. That was insane. What did we want? First, it was like a whole readout of a Wikipedia page about some random airplane. And then there was some conversation about what filthy meant in regards to music for another like 15 minutes. True. Like, what's going on? Well, uh, you know, just hanging out. Here, I wouldn't be upset with you. I'm upset with you because you care. Because I know that you care about me. If you didn't care about me, then we just wouldn't be. F oh, one more thing. What up? Uh. I've been inactive on my YouTube for a really long time. Important video on my channel on Saturday. Just had to get that. I have people spamming that I should mention that. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Important video. Right, thank you. Bye bye. Friends. That's why I'm hurt. I'm hurt because I know that you do care about me. But I'm, I'm like you, but except with, with uh, conflict and friendships. For friendships are pretty easy to have at first because you don't have any really bad feelings about the other person. You're happy every time you see them. You get along with them. There's nothing complicated or, or really upsetting to talk about. You can just kind of like gossip, shoot the shit, whatever. But eventually, at some point in every friendship, there will be conflict. Someone will do or say something that hurts the other person. And then you will find out how intimate the person is really capable of being. And there's a couple of solutions to that. One is, if the person's not capable of having conflict, you just can't get that close to them. And so you have a more distant friendship. But the closeness of the friendship has to reflect how much conflict the friendship can sustain. But our friendship was past that point. Also, there are friends who can not talk to me for three months, and we can pick up like nothing happened. Like, I do have friends that are, that are like old, distant friends like that. But this, this is very different. It's very different to do that, to find out, like, oh, Stardust is she's not trustworthy. This is my test. This is my power play. Stardust is not trustworthy. If you make her mad, she will ghost you. No matter how... I wasn't oh, even mad at you. Okay, you make her scared, she'll ghost you. You make her uncomfortable, she'll ghost you. Whatever the fuck the word is. If you do the wrong thing with Stardust, she's gone. And, it's like, I don't want to be friends with people like that. I don't want to rely on you ever again. I can't trust people like that. Okay, so I did not um, uh, publicly make you an enemy. It doesn't matter. I did not. I don't care if you I did not. I don't give a fuck what you didn't do. I'm talking about what you did. Okay. You ditched me. I can't be friends with somebody who runs from conflict like that. Ooh. Um, I, I'm sorry I didn't re re react the way that you wanted me to react, but fuck that's you. just that not was such the way a bullshit that I was going to react. That's such a bullshit response. I'm sorry I didn't react the way you wanted me to react, but that just wasn't how I was going to react. That doesn't mean anything. You can't even have this conversation. You, like, literally can't handle conflict. If you can't handle conflict, we can't really be friends. But I, what I don't want is a relationship where mm. I provide all the warmth, I provide all the understanding, I provide all the conflict resolution, where I'm basically fucking parenting you, walking you through how to deal with being mad at somebody. Damn. And, and not, and not ditch them for three months. Is. It's like, it's for, you're acting like a fucking 14 year old. You're I not think, emotionally no, mature enough for so. me to be friends with you. <laughs> I think that I needed, again, after that conversation, um, I was uncomfortable and I just needed space and that's what I did. I took space. I didn't ask you, no, uh, you know, I didn't if, need you, you to hold my you, hand. I even, didn't need, I, you know, you I didn't need anybody space, else if, to hold my hand. Even if you, okay, taking three months of space after that conversation is a friendship destroying we, act for well, most, we for most still relationships. We talked occasionally. We didn't, know. we did no. It was a very icy, cold, distant, fake shit. No, we didn't. Damn. Okay, icy cold. Okay, so, uh, so it wasn't icy cold to me. But yeah, I, your, your definition of closeness and warmth is super different from mine. Obviously, okay. this may seem normal to you. It may be normal to you and in, in your life for people to just not speak to each other when they have conflict. In fact, I'm positive that it is. Ooh. I'm almost certain that this is how you are and this is how people treat you. And you probably put up with it and they put up with it from you. I don't want this shit in my life. No, I can't. I can't. Right. I can't. I can't do that. Damn. So we can be colleagues because that is friendly colleagues. Big uh, power I, play I coming out from Mr. Girl. I like you. One. I like you a lot. And uh, I always will.
but the, our relationship now needs to change into a relationship that where this makes sense. We can have a relationship where if I make you uncomfortable and I don't hear from you for three months or I, I have some horrible thing happen to me, you don't check in with me and I won't, I won't give a shit, that's fine. That's the relationship that we need to have now. Colleagues. Okay. He just big it's homied fine. her. True. So like, irrelevant. He didn't check in with me. That's fine. Right. He, he doesn't have to. I like irrelevant. I like him a lot. He's a cool dude. I have no sense that he should or or even would reach out to see how I'm doing. All right. Okay. I mean, sounds like I started seeing, you know, you don't know, sound too concerned about this, this friendship going anyway, so like... It sucks, but it is what it is, so... Okay, well, before we sort of end things, I mean, is there any way to rebuild trust? Is there anything that could be done there to... Uh, sure, if Stardust, been... if Stardust changes in some pretty significant ways with ability to communicate about conflict, and I, I mean, I th it seems like the biggest problem is her not even knowing how she is feeling. If it takes you three months to figure out how you're feeling about something well enough to talk about it, I don't see how an intimate... Or, or even reasonably close friendship with you is possible. Do I even need but this? But yeah, if those, if those things I don't change, think I need this landing um, then sure we can uh, we can talk about it. I later. think Mr. But Girl needs to own up to um, uh -oh. being purposely antagonistic. Uh oh. Um, I think he needs to own up to um, to calling something that is necessary and and contradicting himself several times, not just in this conversation, but in the last conversation calling something unreasonable, power play, unnecessary. Um, you've used these adjectives for power play um, uh, while simultaneously saying that something um, can be a power play and be necessary. I just don't think that's the case. I think a lot of the, you also have to own up to the fact that you're calling a, a power play, you have such a broad definition of what a power play is. Um, that anything under the sun could be a power play. Um, so, I'm, I mean, like, yeah, I don't really have anything to say about our friendship. Like, you know, it is what it is. So, okay, let this let this be a teachable moment for the audience. People who don't know how they feel will ascribe their feelings to you and say that you caused them on purpose. And I think you were purposely being antagonistic. Okay, so you think I'm just lying to you now? No, I, I do think you're lying to me. I think you were upset about me taking Shaylin's side in that conflict <laughs> a little bit before, and you brought it up midway in that conversation, and you were upset with me, and uh, Wait, what, and, what, what, and you took you it out on me. Shaylin's, what is Shaylin's side? Uh, on the, the whole thing with the uh, doll review or whatever. You, you brought that up mid-conversation and said, well, you... You said this. You said that um, you thought I was wrong for this, and um, I think you were resentful of me do you for think saying that. that. Do you think Shaylin thinks that I was abusive and wrong? For no, I didn't. I didn't call you abusive. I and, and I just said that I thought you, you were wrong really, for the way. You said it was really fucked up. Did I say it was really? Or fucked you said up? I, I was, said maybe said I was a jerk. I said you were a jerk. Yeah, I don't think I called it really think, fucked is up. That, is I, that what you think Shaylin's side is that I'm a jerk? I don't. I don't. Uh, well, okay. So maybe that's not her side. Maybe her. Maybe her perspective on that is different from mine. But you didn't like the, my perspective on that, and I think that you were resentful of me for my perspective on that. So, and I think you were trying to elicit a negative reaction from me. So. Wow. Okay, well, all I can do is say that uh, if you're saying, I mean, I can just tell you you're wrong. If you're saying that I purposely was doing that and I, I was trying to hurt you, then uh, no, Tense I wasn't. Strength. If you're saying I unconsciously was lashing out at you, I can't, I mean, I can't speak to that. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> so, yeah, you said that we could talk about the Mr. Girl conversation. Yeah. What do you want to chat about? And she just leaves. Okay. What's up? What do you want to chat about it? Or do you have any um, specific thoughts, ideas, feedbacks, feelings? I so I I reviewed the first conversation that him and I had that led to the second conver this one that happened yesterday, mm -hmm. and um and he claims in our he claimed in our conversation yesterday that 
he asked me so many times if I was angry at him, if I was mad at him. And to, and to be fair to him, he did ask me. But at the points that he asked me, um, I really, I truly was not upset with him. I truly was not mad at him. I was not uncomfortable with him. I don't think things got uncomfortable until like around 50 minutes in. Um, and at that point, I, I wasn't even sure I was uncomfortable when I when I started getting uncomfortable, right? Like, you, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where um, where something feels off, uh, but you're not truly sure like how uncomfortable you're feeling in the situation until later. Um, you're gaslighting. And that's what you're telling me. Go ahead. I'm gaslighting. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I I just. Yeah, things. I truly was not mad at him. If anything, if anything, he was. It seems like he had started to get antagonistic towards me in the first conversation. Around forty-six minutes, he's like saying, "It's your fucking attitude, Stardust." Mm -hmm. um, uh, and we were just talking about the same things that we were talking about in this one about. Um, about like waiting for sex and he's saying you know you're you know that you're crazy that's okay if you know that there's something fucking wrong with you and you're a sick weirdo then that's totally fine um if you acknowledge it and tell the person okay um and i uh i i tried to clarify with him several times throughout that conversation that I know that it's not normal, and I and I express that to my partners. I know that I need a little bit more time. Wait, what is even not normal? I'm so curious. Well, let's go back to the very root. What is your original state of position? Uh, well, my 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 position basically, I started off the convo because I really liked one of his videos he made about yeah. this, him saying that women should just say no. They shouldn't say, mm -hmm. "Oh, I'm tired." Oh, this. Okay. And I came into that conversation saying, you know, I really agree with you, and I advise women younger than me to practice early, start saying no, start practicing saying no, mm -hmm. because there is going to be a point. At least for me, I've been at a point where when I'm saying I need more time, I'm not rejecting the person. I really am being honest that yeah. I need more time. Okay. Um. And I'm I'm not trying to uh, to, to reject play games or to shit test yeah or it. play yeah. game yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and he was saying that he thinks that that's a power play mm -hmm. um, and I'm willing to accept that maybe some people do do this as a test right to see if if a man can take a no mm -hmm. um, but I was trying to explain to him throughout this entire conversation like. It, sure, there there may be an aspect of that test in it, but my primary motivator for it is not that. Uh, uh, my primary motivator is is to get to know the person better. I mm -hmm. just so like, I think the, I may, the way that I would yeah. have phrased this. I don't know if you were listening to my stream or not when I was saying this. The way that I would have phrased this mm -hmm. is: it's okay to say that, like, yeah, it's a test. Like, in in a way, we're always testing each other constantly. The issue that you have, the reason why you don't want to admit that, is because test has a very negative connotation but it doesn't have to. You almost kind of unintentionally got there at the end when you were saying like, okay, well in that case, everything is a test to you. It was kind of like your way of trying to diffuse the tension around the word, but that's actually true. Like there are a lot of ways that we kind of sort of yeah, test each other. Yeah, I'm literally willing nothing to accept that. that. Yeah, yeah, so you should yeah. just, if you ever get into an argument, like, just own it, like, yeah, in a way it is kind of, I'm just saying if he's patient enough to wait and like make me feel like safe and secure. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It is a type of test, but it's okay to test people that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm fine with it being a test. Um, uh, I'm fine with there being a testing aspect, mm -hmm. but um, but it, there's a very specific uh, connotation to test. Connotation yeah. of it, yeah, and him specifically calling it like word for word, calling it a power play, yeah. or calling it controlling. Mm -hmm. um, and that the problem you get into there is that, and you'll run into this. Oh God, if he's listening, I don't mean to spin this too negatively, but. He tends to take words that have highly charged connotations to them, and then he either wants to pretend those connotations don't exist, or he wants you to pretend for the purpose of that conversation that these connotations don't exist. Um, because when he says test and power play, like these words have highly manipulative and like malevolent uh, ideas behind them, you know, like or, or connotations behind them. They're very, very, very morally loaded words. Like when you say, oh, it's a power play, the idea is you're like fucking with somebody. You're in a, you've got a lot of leverage over them. You're kind of like toying with their mind for your own amusement or entertainment or to get something that you want, you know? They're, um, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're very, very loaded 
terms. And I, or, 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 yeah, they're very loaded words, and I think he throws them a little bit too casually sometimes. That's how I feel. But Yeah. Um, and uh, so I think part of the reason I, I walked away feeling uncomfortable from that, com that first conversation is um, because I kept trying to explain to him that um, there's no power play uh, coming for me in this. Um, and he's saying that um, that I should be accepting of somebody getting angry at me for expressing those boundaries, mm -hmm. um, which is fine if you get angry, but anger to me kind of seems like a, a, like a red flag. Mm -hmm. And I think it's reasonable for me to... Um, decide that that's not a healthy kind of interaction to continue, right? Yeah, if somebody sure. gets mad at me for having a uh, sexual boundary. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, right. it's totally fine for the other person to feel upset or angry or whatever. Um, they can feel that way. I'd say it's probably not the healthiest feeling they can feel that way, but then it's within your right totally be like, okay, cool. I don't like ever want to talk to you or see you again. That's totally fine. That'd be the piece of advice I would give to anybody in that situation. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I walked away from that conversation feeling very uncomfortable with it. Um, and uh, I, I guess I didn't really understand how uncomfortable I was with it. Um, I wasn't mad at him, um, but I feel like it was normal for me to feel like after somebody says that me asserting boundaries is somehow demeaning men or giving them a test or comparing them to dogs or mm -hmm. a power play i felt like it's pretty normal for me to like I, and i don't know what his definition of ghosting is but um mm -hmm. but he said i was ghosting him for three months um i i don't know that i would call it ghosting but we definitely we stopped talking as often Ghosting implies um, somebody's messaging somebody else and then the other person's not responding. That's what ghosting yeah. is. Yeah, I would be delayed in some of my responses for sure. Okay. And I understand him being um, upset about that. And I understand him being upset about me not contacting him as often. Um, but it takes two to tango. Um, it, you know, as as uh, as much as fault as there is on my side for not contact, contacting him as much, there's equal amounts of blame on his side too for not contacting me as much. And I think it's completely reasonable after being told that my boundaries are somehow a power play or, or when he's comparing them to me, like treating somebody like a dog, I'm somehow demeaning somebody by, by enforcing boundaries that um, it's probably reasonable for me to, um, to kind of withdraw a bit, right? Like, I don't think that I'm being, I, I didn't like really bad mouth him. I said it was like an uncomfortable situation. I still expressed support from him for him publicly in a very public manner when he got deplatformed. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I've gotten so much flack for supporting him. Um, and uh, more flack I've gotten from supporting him than anybody else online. Mm -hmm. And um, and for him to act like us talking less over the last few months is some huge offense seems ridiculous to me when um, when I'm still to this day getting criticized for um, supporting him. And and I even like called out like big tech on stream for mass reporting. Um, it just feels like it feels like I went through uh, so much. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to get emotional about this. Um, it just it feels like I went through so much um, defending him um, for him to just take this this uh, rift that we're having and like say that I'm untrustworthy and that I've done some huge offense to, to our friendship. Um, when really what I did was withdraw, like I felt like all I did was withdraw um, and I feel like that would have been a normal response. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm, um, maybe I have a weird perspective or something, I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, I think that, um, I try not to think of response in terms of like weird, uh, but rather like reasonable. 
Like, is it, is it reasonable that if you feel like somebody has pushed you on your boundaries um, or has made you feel uncomfortable about your boundaries, is it reasonable to withdraw from that person? Um, and then one way that you can evaluate the reasonableness of it is try to at, pretend like a friend is asking you this, a similar scenario. What advice would you give that friend? Um, and I mean, I think it sounds like fairly reasonable. I don't think it sounds completely out of line. Um, it's probably... I'm trying to be very fair to him because I was going to say it's probably not unreasonable for him to feel upset, but I would say it's unreasonable for him to feel upset because you should understand why somebody would get like really upset about you pushing a boundary like that or making somebody feel uncomfortable. Like that should be a pretty obvious thing, but I mean, obviously he would disagree about that. Um, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll end up being really one-sided on that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, what else? Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I can understand how you're feeling. Are you just looking for me to <laughs> tell you you're not crazy or what? Um. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I wasn't expecting to get like, you know, worked up about this, but, um, I just like reviewed the last conversation. I went through everything line by line and, um, I don't know. I get that he's upset and I, I, if this is the way that the friendship ends, it's mm -hmm. the way that it ends. It just, it, it just feels, it feels, uh, kind of shitty. Like it just yeah. feels um yeah the problem you're having is that you feel like you've kind of go put yourself out a bit for him um and then he treated you in an incredibly harsh way or what you perceive to be an incredibly harsh or insensitive at least way and that when you took a little bit of space afterwards he's essentially discounted every bit of friendship that you feel like you've put forth for him and now you're like well what the fuck was it all worth it's that i have this feeling a lot it's when you're getting hit from both sides and you're like hold on <laughs> why the fuck am i getting hit on both ends of this. Like, if that's gonna be the case, then I'm just gonna completely abandon one because there's no reason to, to take it from both sides like that. Um, and that's probably the feeling that you're getting here, I would imagine. Except it's even worse here because it's with like a personal relationship, not just a, um, like an online thing. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's, I think it's reasonable. Again, like, I, I understand why he, he's got his own baggage for feeling upset about why a woman would want to not have sex immediately. Um, I totally understand that. Um, I just wish that there was, um, like after that, that first conversation, he quite literally compares it to holding a biscuit on a dog's nose. And, and that's what I'm doing to people when I, when I say that I need, I need time before getting physical. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just feels like you're, you're blaming me somehow you like me expressing a sexual boundary is somehow demeaning you and i don't know how i'm supposed to react to that like it just was such a strange conversation for me and i figured i just need some space things feel weird and that's what i did and i didn't make it a huge thing i didn't i didn't make um I didn't, I, I don't think I did, at least. I don't think I made it a huge thing. I just kind of withdrew from him and I was still, I still viewed him as like a distant friend, but, um, but I didn't know that even, um, he would be so upset that I didn't send him a message when he got deplatformed, you know, like I still stuck up for him in a public manner then, even if I didn't message him privately, but. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he could have a standard for friendship where he would expect that. And then he also doesn't understand, like, how upset you are over everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, any other pointers on the conversation? I know I got very heated in the conversation um, and insulted Chud. But it was, like, only for fun and stuff. I, I didn't mean anything negative about it. So. Um, do I have any pointers or anything? Um, I don't think so, no. Um, oh, I, oh, I guess the major thing I saw that was kind of annoying was, um, you guys need to, uh, when you're having disagreements like this, it's really important to get definitions straight as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. um, to make sure that you guys are on the same page. Cause sometimes you guys both end up using like different definitions and then you have an argument for way too long than you need to, when it could be resolved so much quicker if you were on the same page. And so far as like defining terms or whatever. I agree with that. I think, um, I think a lot of our issues are just fundamentally different definitions for things just sure like yeah he like and and his definition of controlling is so much more broad than mine mm -hmm. um he thinks that controlling like somebody can be controlling um uh while still needing to be controlling and i think that calling something controlling is implying that there doesn't need to be control there so. 
Yeah, maybe. It gets complicated figuring out exactly who the fuck is meaning what there. But like I said, this is why it's good to just like hash out like what exactly do we mean, do we mean when we say these words so that, yeah, there's not a bunch of like, like a lot of your, like over half that conversation was on, on like what the fuck words meant when you guys were talking to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Sorry for, um, you know, getting a little, um, emotional um i i swear i didn't care yesterday <laughs> but i went through the whole conversation today and then mm -hmm. you know i felt kind of bad but gotcha yeah. um but uh yeah it is what it is if this is just like how it ends it's how it ends i guess so all right well good luck yeah. have fun be careful all right yeah thanks you too yep. see ya bye